Let's now uh, resume the uh, suspended meeting of the Committee on Good Government Public Accountability joint with the Committee on Public Accounts. Before we begin, uh, may we just have a moment of silence as our prayer for our personal intentions. Okay, so uh, good morning everyone. Uh, before we begin, let me recognize the uh, members who are here with us today. First on my left, Deputy Speaker Prosper Pichai, our Senior Deputy Majority Floor Leader uh, Jesus Boying Remulla, from the uh, Akubikol Party List, the Honorable Pids Gerbin, and uh, the Lone District of uh, Romblon, the Honorable Bedoy Madrona. We have uh, the uh, guest, of course, th those who were with us yesterday, but uh, the person to represent the Manila Water Company's former president of the Manila Water, Mr. Tony Aquino. Good morning. He was also there with us yesterday. From the uh, Manilad Water Services, Mr. Randolph Estrellado, the CEO of Mainilad. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Ramoncito Fernandez is here. Thank you. And of course, from the... Attorney Howard Azardon from the Government Corporate Council. Attorney Faye Desagon, Legal and Political Officer of the Philippine Competition Commission. Mr. Chip Vega, Director and CEO of the Philippine Competition Commission. Attorney Claudine Sorena of the MWSS. With uh, Attorney Chris Chugan and Leonor Cleofas. Attorney Rosario Elena, Senior State Council of the DOJ. And, uh, oh, uh, sorry, Attorney Rosario Cuevas. Senior State Council of the DOJ. So, okay. So, okay. Um, let me just begin by saying that uh, yesterday there were three points finalized and it was uh, broadcast in uh, media and social media. We thank the corporations who were there who with us today for that uh, number one on the for, for them to not anymore claim the arbitral award number two is uh, for them not to increase the rates number three uh, is their willingness to discuss the onerous provisions and particularly their withdrawal to collect from the corporate uh, corporate income tax given a fair and equitable uh, agree uh, agreement on the rate of return. So from there, we were discussing several points on the honorous provisions, but uh, and some other issues were raised by the members of the committee. Uh, before I begin, let me just reiterate that the privatization that was done in 1997 was actually the biggest privatization uh, project in the world at that time. A pro uh, projection was at seven billion dollars. No, I was not. <laughs> ah, yes, I was. I was. I was in Congress at the time. This was a. They followed the, and it was an improvement of the program done in Buenos Aires. Twenty-two years ago. Uh, before we begin, uh, let me just ask the, MWSS because there were reports yesterday. In fact, in the afternoon that the contracts were already cancelled. We just want a clarification on that before I ask the other members to do their inter interpolation. The uh, renewal of the concession, uh, as reported, was cancelled. May we ask from MWSS uh, the veracity of this report? Mr. Chair, before uh, the answer, I, I would like to, to have a parliamentary inquiry. This is a joint uh, hearing between the Committee on Go Government and Public Accountability public and accountability. Committee on Public Accounts. So, um, are you chairing also the 
uh, I'm chairing uh, I'm chairing uh, Good Government. Uh, in the absence of uh, I'm the senior vice chair of Good Government. Can you please sit beside the Yes. If just for the information of the, the Honorable Pichai, uh, our, I'm also the vice chairman of the Committee on Good Government, and uh, the Honorable Remulla is our senior vice chair, vice chair person. Well, I just wanted uh, to put it on record that uh, this is still a joint session between uh, the Committee on Good Government and uh, Public Accountability. So thank, thank you, you for Mr. That. Chair. Thank you, Congressman Pichai. So may we ask the MWSS as regards the report that came out last night, Uh, the report that came out was that MWSS supposedly cancelled the contract. It, it stated that the resolution was cancelled. So we want to know exactly the truth and the details of the action taken by MWSS. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Although I'm not part of the board, I have not been authorized by the board to speak for them, but uh, I was present during the board meeting last week. December, five. Uh, December held last December 5. Attorney Serena, uh, just before you reply, OGCC is the uh, corporate secretary of the MWSS. Is that not correct? We are the statutory council, Mr. Chair, but not necessarily the corporate secretary. Do you not sit as corporate secretary uh, the, of the yeah, MWS? Uh, board member of the board of trustees, so, member, member of the board of trustees, ex official member of the board, but not necessarily the corporate secretary, Mr. Chair. Is there no one from NWSS who can make an official reply to that query? Because the problem is if if this would be an unofficial reply, you know, it may not be, it cannot be, yes, MWSS. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning to everybody. I'm General Cleopas, the Deputy, Admi Deputy Administrator for Engineering of Corporate Office. I was also there during the December 5 board meeting, and it was in the agenda that the board uh, tackled the resolution on the approval of the extension of the concession agreement. Uh, that was in 2008 and 2009. And uh, I, if, if I may uh, also inform that that was uh, brought about by the directive of the president uh, tackled in the cabinet meeting wherein uh, one of which is the onerous provisions, the, the uh, second is the uh, to rescind the memorandum of agreement on the extension of the uh, concession agreement, Mr. Chair. Ma'am, yung, yung pong 2008-2009, renewal. Extension po, Mr. Ex Chair. I'm sorry, extension. <coughs> yes. Bakit ngayon lang kayo nag-a-act? Ano yan, confirmation of the renewal? Uh, no. Ratification? Uh, no, uh, Mr. Chair, no. It's uh, because of the... Uh, Directive of the so kina cancel nyo lang yung board resolution, Mr. Chair. Ano yung board resolution na yun? The board resolution is extending the concession agreement by another 15 years, Mr. Chair. So to be clear, nagkaroon po kayo ng 2008 ng resolution confirming it. Yes. Tapos ngayon po ginawa niyo kina cancel nyo na. Yeah, the new board, uh, based on the um, recent directive of the. Office of the President and the Cabinet uh, meeting, uh, this, which was discussed, uh, they are now uh, revoking. The, I think the, the word is revoking the um, board resolution adopted in 2008, right? Matanong ko lang ho, bago ko po bigyan ng pagkakataon yung ating mga kasama na, no? I think some of them medyo magsisentro dyan sa mga binabanggit nyo. Yung pong pag-cancel nyo na yan, di ba ho yung presyo, yung taripa, o yung pagtas ng presyo, nakabata yan sa pag-extend? Di ba ho? So, kung hindi ho yan ma-extend, matatapos yan ng 2022. Para mag-comply kayo sa kontrata ng original concessioner agreement ng 1997, magkano itataas ng presyo? Good 
Good morning, Mr. Chair. Um, for now, if the contract will be cancelled uh, by 2022, there will no longer be a price adjustment. So whatever, whatever... Yeah, ganito po, uh, Mr. Chugan. Nung pong nirenew nyo yan, iniisip nyo, sige, renew natin para hindi masyadong matasang taripa. May study kayo dyan. Ngayon ho, hindi nyo na renew. Sabi nyo, wag na. Magkano itataas ng presyo? Hindi, hindi po clear kung tataas po ang presyo. Dahil po pag natapos ang kontrata, pwede pong iparibid or magparoon po ng another bidding wherein new operators may come in. So, kasi po dapat po nakaschedule po tayo ng rate rebasing uli ng 2023. However, kung hindi na po matutuloy yun dahil po kung kanselado yeah, po ang kontrata. Ang tanong ko lang po, ano, kung ang tinaas niya dapat ay 20 pesos. Yes, sir. Tapos ginawa ninyong mas maikli. E de, nagdagdag ka ng 15 years eh. Yes. Na parang inanumod. Ano dapat yung itataas? Uh, wala na pong pagkakataon para mag-recompute po. Kasi po tapos na po yung huling rate rebasing which is 2018. Pero nung nag-negosasyon nag kayo, pinag-usapan nyo na yun eh. Na kung di nyo kami bibigyan ng 15 years, ito itataas namin. Gusto ko lang malaman, ano yung napag-usapan nyo dun? At that time, when you were this, di ba, nung, syempre, kaya kayo pumayag eh. Di ba, yung nausapan kapon, yun din ang binabanggit sa amin. Andito ba yung regulatory office? Ah, kayo pala, opo. Sila din, MWSS. may separate office yung regulatory kayo office eh. Uh, oh. So, sino magkano dap? Sinong corporate? Kayo corporate, sila regulatory. So, magkano itataas dapat? Just for the record, malaman lang namin. Isang daan ba? 50 ba? 5 piso? Okay. Kung hindi nyo humasagot, palagay ko alam ng Manila Motor Maynila dyan. Mabilis lang kong tanong ha. Doon lang kong sa presyo. Magkano yung dapat na projection dyan? Kung 2022 ang matatapos. How much is their application? Ah, yes. Mr. Fernandez. Um, Mr. Chair, we're still computing our, our finance officer is here. Uh, but definitely, it will go very high because the rationale of the extension at that time was to mitigate any spikes in tariffs or pressure ng tubig because nga ho, kailangan pong mag-invest pa ng mga water concessioners ng mas malaki. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez. Uh, from Manila Water, Mr. Aquino. Pareho din po kami nung uh, position. Kailangan pa po namin ma-recompute kung ano yung eksakto sapagkat uh, hindi po yan na, na ayon do sa mga previous discussions. Uh, ang nangyari po kasi noon, pagkatapos noong resolution nila ng 2009, na-execute na po yung ating extension. And doon po sa extension na yon nagkaroon na po ng uh, dalawang rate rebasing processes kung saan po ang naging assumption is yung extended term. Kanya, kung mawawala yung extended term, talaga pong uh, napaka, uh, magkakaroon po ng mas malaking adjustment kung ang mababawi mo doon sa mas maikling panahon. Okay, just to put it sa uh, uh, contextualize yung pag-uusap, so ang usapan nga tataas pero hindi nyo na-compute because hindi nagkaroon ng ganong usapan. At pangalawang sinasabi ngayon ng regulatory office, MWSS, meron naman tayong exit plan na pagka may ibang pumasok, ibang nagbid, maka maaring on the base of the 15 years, hindi naman ganun itaas. Ganun yung ating sitwasyon. So na, okay, so now I uh, would like to ask the our colleagues who are here today. Okay. The Honorable Gerbin is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, three points were raised earlier, and that was the product of the hearing yesterday. We're in uh, the concessioners are now foregoing with the arbitral judgment uh, in Singapore. Second is the no rate increase. And um, today, uh, we're scheduled to tackle, most of us are scheduled to tackle the onerous provisions. Now, matanong ko lang ho sa ating mga concessioner because you took the lead on foregoing the arbitral judgment you secured in Singapore. Um, <clears throat> ang tanong ko ho, kayo na rin ho yung 
in your opening statement yesterday uh, that you want to forgo and you will no longer invoke, enforce the same. Ano ho yung nag sa inyo kung bakit uh, nanggaling na rin ho sa inyo na hindi na ho kayo maniningil sa ating gobyerno? Uh, MWSS, May, uh, no, Maynila and Manila Water, please answer. So, Maynila, recognize. Uh, magandang umaga po. Uh, Mr. Chair, ang, ang rational po nung aming decision not to go after the arbitral award Sa Maynilad po ay tinanggap po namin yung award noong 2017 pa. And uh, for the record, um, nung hindi ho kami nagkakaroon ng progress dun sa arbitral award namin, nag-make na po yung ng statement ang aming chairman, Mr. Pangilinan, as early as 2017, na we're willing to start with the clean slate. Uh, ito pong huli, ang decision po namin ay really in, in, in coordination and in compliance with our statement that we are willing to cooperate and discuss with the government about how to move forward. So you're saying that as early as 2017, um, your company, through your boss, uh, Mr. Pangilinan, uh, willing not to forgo with the arbitral judgment. Tama ho ba yun? Um, I think that's not the more accurate statement. Our The statement was, we were willing to start with the clean slate. We're willing to start with the clean slate. But it was only made public yesterday. Tama ho ba? Kasi we were asked bo. You were asked by the president. Yes. And nakita nyo rin yung galit ng publiko. Tama ho ba? Would you consider it unconscionable, unfair, and will cause injustice to the Filipino people? This applies not only to uh, you, but to both concessioners. Please answer the same. Dahil kayo na rin, yung nanguna. Uh, hindi namin hiningi. Kayo na yung hiningi ng presidente, hiningi ng taong bayan, Hiningi rin yun ng Kongreso, pero sa base sa inyong opening statement kahapon, kayo na rin yung nagsabi sa taong bayan. Uh, sa panig po ng Manila Water, yung pong judgment ng uh, arbitral panel ay nangyari po nung isang linggo. Opo. Mga, hindi ko lang po alam ko ano yung exact date. And pagkatapos po namin matanggap yun, ay kinausap na po namin ang Secretary of Finance para po masabi namin na kami po ay naghahanap ng workable solution para doon sa issue na yon At uh, pagkatapos po ng uh, maraming uh, pag-uusap sa aming, uh, sa mga nakaraang araw, ay nagkaroon na po ang decision ng board <coughs> noong pong uh, bali kahapon lamang po yata na sabi nga ni the President Almendras at yun po ang aming na-communicate formally to this committee as well as to the Office of but the President. In, in, in the process of deliberating it in your board, did you ever think at the back of, you know, your supposed corporate social responsibility na naisip nyo rin that this is unconscionable, this is unfair, and uh, this is will create injustice? Baleo sa inyo. Ano, ano yung consideration nyo? Hindi lang yung, syempre naman, meron kayang underlying reason eh. Hindi lang yung galit na pinakita ni Presidente. Kayo rin, no? siyempre, inassess nyo rin whether to invoke it to the competent court or assess it and uh, meron din pag-isip-isip at uh, galing sa puso na desisyon. Ano ho ba? Ano ho ba? Kung ma-share nyo na sa amin dito sa committee. Mr. Chair, uh, sa panig po ng Manila, we have been acting in good faith in our concession agreement which was crafted, written, reviewed, and approved by the government at the time when there was a water crisis. And that is the basis of our good faith in our contract. And we have been continuously 
improving our services to our customers. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. But if you will continue invoke good faith, then you will say that um, the arbitral judgment you gain in the Singapore Arbitration Court were all done in good faith and that you will pursue the same. But it was... It was Kabaliktaran yung nangyari kahapon. That's what tinatanong ko sa inyo. Uh, ito ba'y dahil sa panganawagan ng presidente? Dahil sa galit ng uh, taong bayan? Pati na rin ng kongreso? O ano ba yung pinakarason? Would you also consider it? Again, I will um, reiterate. Is it unconscionable? Is it unfair? Will it cause injustice to the Filipino people? Sa amin po, kanya po namin nagkailangan mag-file doon sa Singapore ay dahil po gusto po namin na yung mga proseso na nanaayon doon sa concession agreement ay masunod. Sapagkat doon lamang po sa pamamagitan ng mga tamang proseso na nasa concession agreement, namin magagawang makautang, makapagdagdag ng investment para po sa kapakanan ng ating mga mamamayan. But you are... Yung po ang talagang dahilan kung bakit po namin kinailangang uh, uh, maliwanagan. And hopefully, ang gusto po namin mangyari, Mr. Chairman, is to be able to come around with you know, a workable solution para po ma-avoid yung mga ganoong conflicts. Yun po ang uh, ninanais naming mangyari, Mr. Chairman. So, dahil sa pagnanais nyo na magkaroon ng workable solution, you're willing, and in fact, you took the lead in foregoing the arbitral judgment. Ganun ba yung lumalabas dito? Uh, sa amin pong, uh, uh, sa Manila Water po, yun na nga po ang uh, nangyari. Ito po yung kasama doon sa workable solution together with yung isa namin pagnanais na magkaroon ng fair return for whatever investments we can make para po maipagpatuloy ang pagpapaganda ng provision of water and wastewater services, Mr. Chairman. May nilad, may, may you, you please reply. May nilad. Yes, uh, I confirm, Mr. Chair, that uh, that is our desire. In deference to the presidents, uh, we also would like to have a work starting starting point to do a to work to come up with a workable solution together with government. Pero sa well, aming begin. assessment, at, last question, uh, yes. Uh, panayam at um, uh, binitawan na salita ng ating presidente. To start with a clean slate, it is not enough that you have to forego with the arbitral judgment. Remember that the DOJ is a finding of onerous provisions and um, uh, there were at least 12 provisions specified, identified by the Department of Justice that the same is onerous and just and against public policy. So, Willing who din ba kayo na to take the lead in amending the concession agreement so that you can now say that we can have a working, workable solution with the um, executive. Remember that kami, oversight lamang, but you know, uh, drafting of contracts are executive in nature. Kayo pa rin at ang Pangulo, ang uh, executive department ang mag-uusap nito. Like for example, business taxes. Cause of arbitration, non-interference on water rates. These are few of the onerous provisions, unjust provisions against public policy as um, determined by uh, the Department of Justice that has to be amended in the concession agreement. Would you be willing or are you willing to take the lead in saying that, okay, ayos na kami dito. Uh, pwede na natin to tanggalin para magkaroon ng workable solution. Please answer. Uh, Maynilad and Manila Water. Uh, yan po yung kasama doon sa third point po noong sinabi namin kahapon na nakahanda ang uh, Manila Water na pag-usapan with the appropriate uh, committee in the executive department that will be tackling all of those points, Mr. Chairman. So yun po yung kasama doon sa third uh, conclusion na sinabi namin kahapon po. We have the same position, sir, that we are willing, to, uh, as we have stated, we're willing to sit down and discuss and cooperate. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Again, uh, I'd like to recognize the Honorable from the minority, 
the Honorable uh, Bonito Singson, the Honorable Pineda, the Honorable Sarate, the Honorable Brosas, and the Honorable Veloso. Uh, may I remind the, our colleagues who are here today, the rule would be three minutes for each one for their questions. But, uh, you know, we can go around. There's always a chance for all of us to exhaust all the questions. So if you want it five, it's okay with me. So we'll make it five minutes for each. All right. So <laughs> may I now recognize uh, after the, the, C the deputy speaker, we will recognize the minority. Donald Pichay is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, uh, this is not a question. Um, did you submit um, the financial statement, both, both uh, concessioners? Have you submitted your financial statement to this uh, honorable body? Uh, Mr. But Chairman, I, I, dala na po namin yung kopya ng aming can, can you submit it to us now? Uh, okay, sir. So that we can see if we, you really made a lot of money or not. For the last five years. Uh, uh, now, um, to start. First, what is given here is water is a right. In other words, obligasyon ng ating pamahalaan na talagang magbigay tayo ng clean, potable water sa ating mga kababayan. Ang tanong ko, kung mawawala yung concessioners, kaya ba ng MWSS? MWSS, kind of reply. Kaya bang uh, mag-deliver ng uh, potable water sa ating mga kababayan kung mawawala yung dalawang concessioners? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, gusto ko pong sagutin to noong paano namin in inihandle ang Maynila nung niribid po namin. No, 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 no. My question is, kaya ba ninyo kung mawala yung dalawang concessioners, Maynila at Manila Water? Sa ngayon po, uh, Mr. Chair, sa ngayon po... yes or no? Napakaliit ng aming empleyado, uh, mahigit isang daan lang po, at, uh, so, hindi kaya? Sa ngayon po, kung existing resources, hindi po kaya. So, you cannot manpower. live without the two concessioners? Opo. Okay. Now, um, ang tubig po ay hindi nininegosyo yan. Kasi karapatan pang tao yan. It was declared by the United Nations in 2010, if, I, if, if I'm not mistaken. So, talagang um, kailangan... Kung wala yung dalawang concessioners, yung ating pamahalaan ay kailangan talaga maglaan ng pondo. Uh, the problem is, we only ha in Metro Manila, we only have one source of water, which is the Ipo Dam. Right? Ipo Dam. So, ang Ipo Dam, walang problema oh, pag uh, rainy season dito, which is from June, July, August. Pagdating po ng summer, ay eh medyo mahina na ang... Uh, ang patak ng tubig. So, you have to, ito kasi ang source habagat, no? So, para ma-assure natin yung ating mga kababayan dito sa Metro Manila, you have to have another source na siguro manggagaling from the eastern part of the Philippines kasi andun yung amihan. So, yung rainy season naman doon is from December, January, February, no? November. December, January, February. So with that, that two sources of, uh, of water, hindi tayo mamumoblema. Ngayon, ang tanong ko sa MWSS, meron ho ba kayong programa na magsusource ng ibang source ng, tu ng tubig? Mr. Chair, uh, sa ngayon po ay kasalukuyang ini-implementa ng MWSS Corporate Office, ang Kaliwa Dam. Uh, ito po Anong yung... dam? Kaliwa Dam. Where is it located? Doon po sa eastern side uh, na different ang climate pattern sa Umiray, Angat, Ipo system uh, that's natin. That's right, that's right. So, ngayon po, uh, ongoing po ang ating implementasyon ng Kaliwa So, who is Dam. implementing that? Ang corporate office po. Ng MWSS? Opo. So, magkano naman ang halaga nung, uh, nung uh, project na yan? Ang project cost po ng Kaliwa Dam is 12.2 billion pesos. 12.2? And you have enough money sa MWSS? Ito po ay manggagaling sa ating uh, inutang na Overseas Development Assistance Loan from China. Um, doon po manggagaling ang ating pondo. Okay, so kung na-source na nyo yan, uh, na-source na nyo yan, how will the concessioners come into play? Meron po tayong uh, tripartite 
memorandum of agreement mm -hmm. uh, na nagkasundo ang MWSS Corporate Office at saka Maynila and Manila Water para po sila po ang magpuput up ng local counterpart at ang pagbabayad ng utang natin doon sa paggawa ng kaliwadam. Sa ODA so po... So kayo lang, ang nangutang, ang magbabayad ay ang, ang concessionaires. Yeah. Uh, opo, uh, Congressman. Dahil po sa kadahilanan ng ating MWSS naman po, wala pong tinatanggap na subsidy from the government. Lahat po tayong mga consumer ng Metro Manila sa tubig, tayo po ang lahat ng nagbabayad ng mga investment at operation and maintenance. So, magkano naman yung counterpart ng uh, ating mga concessioners sa 12 billion na yan? So kung ang inutang natin ay 12 billion, magkano ang counterpart nila? Mr. Chairman, uh, Congressman, ang nasasagot po ng ODA loan is 85% of the project costs. 15% po ang sinasagot ng ating local counterpart na more or less mga 2 billion po. Iyon po ang isinasagot ng ating dalawang concessioner that they have to put up immediately the 2 billion dahil ito po ay pag nag, nangungulekta ang ating ma, ang ating contractor binabayaran po natin separately yung 15% at direkta naman po ang China Exim Bank ang nagbabayad doon sa contractor ng uh, so 8515 opo mm -hmm. uh, uh, somebody is raising his hand uh, yes please uh, Sir Fernandez Manila. Mr. Chair. Gusto ko lang po madagdagan yung sinabi ni Deputy Administrator Cleofas na yung aside from sa inutang po ng, ng Philippine government para sa Kaliwa Dam, ang konsesyonaryo po namin ay magtatayo pa po ng planta at ng conveyance system para pa makarating po sa customer. So ang estimate po namin ng planta at saka conveyance mga around another 15 to 18 billion. We have to, to put up a treatment plant that will treat the raw water and convey it to our customers. Okay, so uh, sa concessionaires, yung 18 billion na yan, uh, sino ang sasagot between the two? Sa Maynilad lang po yun, yung 18 billion, 15 to 18, and eventually po, mapadagdag po yan sa presyo ng ating tubig. Uh, so 12 wag billion na, plus 18. Huwag nating tawagin yun na presyo kasi ang tubig walang presyo. Salamat. So, sorry po. Sorry po yung sorry. rate ng delivery. Okay? Sorry po. Let's make it clear that water is not for sale. The tariff that we are paying is for the delivery of water to the residents. Okay? Liwanagin natin yan. So on the part of Manila Water, magkano naman ang additional investment? Mga... Mga 12 billion po yung sa amin kasi po mas malapit kami doon sa source nila doon sa Kaliwa River. Kasi po... Southern ang, part kayo? Uh, nandun okay. po kami sa eastern part eastern. of eastern the concession. Part. Kanya okay. po mas malapit kami ng konti sa bundok. As compared with Maynila, tatawid pa sila ng Laguna Lake. Kanya po mas, uh, mat, mas malaki ng konti. Oh, Pero, so, napakalaki po ng capital investment, di ba? Tama po. Napakalaki ng capital investment. Aside from your investment, kayo pa ang nagbabayad ng 12 billion. Tama pa po yan? Tama po yun. Kami uh, po ang uh, sasagot effectively doon sa debt service. So out of those capital investments, uh, doon nyo kukunin yung uh, investment ninyo sa taripa. Okay. So ilang years naman ang tingin nyo ang recovery ninyo sa taripa na yan, uh, sa investment na yan? Because that is where we will come out whether you are charging a high tariff or low tariff. So ilang years ang... Uh, Ang recovery ninyo. Congressman Pichay, no? e klaro lang, 12 billion yung cost kasama ang ODA, dadagdag ang Maynilad ng 15 to 18, dadagdag si Manila Water ng 12. 12. So, uh, more or less, nasa mga... More or less, dahil ang magbabayad yung concessioners, magkano ang total? Mga 42 billion. 42 billion. So, ilang taon ang tingin nyo, marirecover ninyo yan? Sa amin po, ay inamortize po yan until 2037. Kasi kanya po mahalaga yung issue noon sa... 2037? How many po? years? 18. 18, 18 years. 18 po. years. So ang extension ng contract nyo, ilang years? 15 years. Parang sinasabay na po namin doon, um, Mr. Chairman. So, assuming that um, uh, you are not that greedy, 
gawin nating 25 years, ilan ang ibababa ng taripa? Magkukumpute pa yan. 18 years na lang. No, assuming uh, that they're going to make it 25 years. Magkano ang ibababa ng taripa? I'm not extending your contract, but I'm just asking kung magkano ang ibababa. Uh, pwede po bang ma-compute namin, Mr. Chairman? Kasi po, but, hindi uh, po namin let me go on with uh, some question now. Opa, salamat po. Um, both, ano, this question is to, to both concessionaires, Mr. Chairman. Yes, go ahead. Um, ang leakages ninyo at saka illegal tapping, ilang percent ba? Sa amin po, sa Manila Water, mga 11% po kami, Mr. 11%. Chairman. 11%. And what is the ideal? I, I think we're very close to that ideal already, Mr. Chairman. Which is? 11, 10%. Kasi po, sa ibang mga lungsod. So sa 11%, ilan ang illegal, illegal connection at ilan yung leakages? Uh, ang tingin po namin dyan, Mr. Chair, hindi na po masyadong marami yung sa illegal connection at saka sa leaks. Ang, uh, sa katotohanan po, ang uh, suspecha po namin, ang karamihan doon sa mga leak namin ay nanggagaling doon sa mga more than 100-year-old pipes that were originally laid between Balara and the San Juan. And you have changed that? Hindi pa po namin magagawang palitan kaagad dahil po magkakaroon ng major disruption doon sa service. Hindi bypass nyo yan? Kakailanganin po siguro, Mr. Chair, is to be able to gradually do that yeah. until we get to that point. But just to give you an... Because 11% is still high, you know. The ideal would be 5%. Well, uh, that's true, sir. Uh, ang nangyayari po sa amin po, sa Singapore, alam namin, they're at that level. Ang uh, naging advantage po nila doon, medyo bago-bago yung sistema nila. Tayo po, dahil sa yung iba po nating mga mainline are more than 100 years old, Kanya po talagang meron pa niyang ganyang uh, problema. So, we are trying very hard, uh, Mr. Chairman, to really bring it down. I think uh, when you know that uh, we had come from uh, 67% when we started, this is really probably one of the best uh, reductions in the world wow. that to be able to bring it down to that level, Mr. Chairman. Uh, how about the other concessioner? Again, for the record, Congressman Pichay, from 67%, to 11%. Maynilad is recognized. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Kami po sa Maynilad po ay nagsimula po ang concessionary namin noong 2007. So we're 10 years later than, than Manila Water. Um, nung binana po namin yung aming concession, um, nagsimula po ang, ang non-revenue water ng Maynilad at 68% noong 2007. So since 2007 po, napababa na po namin ang NRW namin to 27. Uh, it's still uh, far from the ideal, but uh, just to share with you, sir, uh, Mr. Chairperson, uh, that Maynila has already spent uh, 40 billion pesos since 2007 and replaced 2,500 kilometers of pipes that are circa Hispanic and American time. Meron pa po kaming pinilitan na ceramic pa po yung, yung, mga, yung ating mga pipes. So, ganun ko ka, kagrabe yung sitwasyon nung 2007. Congressman Pichay, can you uh, um, um, What is your timetable na mabababa yan ng 5%? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, in, with due respect po, uh, ang international standard po talaga is 12 Kasi po ang studies na nadidinig namin, especially for a very old network, it will be more, uh, hindi na po economical pag ginastusan pa ng pababaan pa sa more, more, less than 12. So Pero ang timetable uh, po namin... Ang timetable nyo hanggang sa 12% or 10%? Yes, Mr. Chairperson, ang timetable po namin 2027. 2027, okay. Um, going back to my previous question, kung i-extend natin up to 25 years yung... Uh, uh, concession agreement. Magkano ang ibababa ng taripa? How much is the tariff right now? And how much will it be? Congressman Pichay, earlier we asked them dun sa cancellation kung ano na yung magiging taripa. I think they're still calculating. So for both the Manila Water and Manila, gusto namin makita pag kinancel yung contract, ano yung magiging effect. Number two, yung tinatanong ni Congressman Pichay, if we extend given the projects no that uh, are in line are there in the pipeline 
ano yung magiging epekto sa taripa? In the current of, let's say, an extension of 15 years, uh, 18 years, yung remaining 18 years, and if it is extended to 25, gusto lang niya makita. So if you don't have that, maybe so, Congressman Pichay, wala, we can... Wala, wala okay. okay, another question. Uh, but I reserve the right to ask. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, the second further. round, uh, Congressman Pichay. Um, sa IPIRA law, mayroon kasing uh, provision doon that you should not make more than 15% of gross vis-a-vis uh, -vis capital investment. So, meron ba tayong ganong provision dito sa ating kontrata? That you should not uh, make more than 15% gross profit out of your capital investment. Can we ask the regulatory office? Uh, what is provided for in the concession agreement is only the 12% ROB limit. That is what is provided for. Nako comply naman yan. Uh, yes, we subject uh, the rates of the concessionaires to uh, that study so that uh, we determine that they have not exceeded the limit. So how do you determine, do you determine the rates? Capital investment? No. Uh, we performed, ang tinatawag po namin ay rate audit. No? This is uh, similar to what COA is doing to utilities prior to privatization uh, ng, ng mga, uh, prior to the IPIRA law yung ginagamit nila sa Meralco nung araw po. Uh, yun po yung ginagawa namin to test whether the rates exceeded the 12% limit. Mr. Chair. So, yun ang ginagawa ninyo? Yes, uh, And con you consider their investments and everything? Yes, we consider all assets used and useful uh, during the time of the study, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, Mr. Thank you. Uh, Chair, uh, thank you very much. But uh, thank you. I, I yes. would like to ask. On the second round, uh, yes. uh, in, in the next cycle, you will still be there. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, uh, Congressman Pichai. We now proceed to the Deputy Minority Leader. Uh, before that, let me recognize the arrival of uh, Congressman Biason, Congressman Barbers, Congressman Gaite. So may I recognize now the Deputy Minority Leader, Cong Congressman Zarate. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning to all the members of the committee. Gusto ko lang uh, sundan, Mr. Chair, yung <coughs> uh, tinanong kanina ni uh, Congressman Garbin. Ano? Dahil uh, headline ngayon sa lahat ng newspaper, yung waiver nga ng uh, dalawang concessioners. No? And uh, lumalabas ngayon, mukhang magpapasalamat pa tayo sa kanila dahil na wave yung uh, arbitral award. But uh, for the record, Mr. Chair, uh, napakatagal na nating kinasyon itong mga onerous provisions na ito ng uh, concession agreement. No? In fact, during uh, summer this year, nung nagkaroon ng water crisis, lumabas itong mga usapin ng uh, onerous provisions uh, which led to the call if not only to review, but to cancel. No? Uh, panawagan nun, i-cancel na itong concession agreements na ito. And uh, for the record also, uh, kami, eh, ilang beses na rin kaming uh, naghain ng uh, kaso, no? either sa regulatory office at sa regular court, to question these uh, uh, onerous provisions na naka-embed doon sa concession agreements. No? Including uh, the anomalous renewal of the concession agreement before nag-expire yung uh, original uh, term no? in 2009. Now, uh, ngayon, uh, sinasabi nung uh, dalawang concessioner, uh, concessioners, no? my nilad said, uh, even 2007, nung matanggap nila yung uh, award ng uh, arbitral court, uh, they were already uh, considering ways to move forward, no? And uh, sabi nila, after nagsalita si uh, Pangulong Duterte, nag -isip, they have already decided and they're willing to cooperate to move forward. Ang Manila Water, they said last week, they have this, uh, uh, they received this decision and they're already thinking of workable solutions. Now, ang uh, lumalabas na solution nila ngayon at uh, uh, parang talagang na tinaglang sila dahil uh, doon sa statement ni uh, uh, President Duterte, no? kahit ano pang sabihin nila, uh, despite sa matagal ng panawagan ng mamamayan noon na uh, alisin yung mga onerous provisions. So to follow up doon sa statement, ni, uh, sa tanong kanina ni Congressman Garbin, 
if you are willing to cooperate and willing to make workable solutions, isa sa pinaka uh, onerous na provision dito sa concession agreement na ito ay yung non-interference clause. No? And uh, talagang hindi katanggap-tanggap yan. No? As a public utility, uh, bakit hindi mabibigyan ng... Uh, Uh, puder ang gobyerno na mag-interfere doon sa gusto ng mga concession, concessioners na ito kung magtaas sila ng taripa. No? So, uh, my first question is, at the minimum, no? are you willing to have this provision on non-interference uh, deleted from, what, from the present concession agreement or <clears throat> during the renegotiation of this concession agreement, Mr. Chair? Before you re reply, uh, Manila Water Maynila, let, gusto ko lang kong sabihin na yung binabangit ni Congressman Sarate, yan din po ang lumalabas sa posisyon ng DOJ. Yung non-interference is sa mga provision na gusto nilang baguhin. So, one of the onerous provisions. So again, uh, kindly reply to Congressman Sarate, Manila Water. Doon po, uh, tama po kayo, Mr. Chairman, that uh, ang nais po namin ay isa yan so, sa mga issue na pag-uusapan po doon sa committee ng Department of Justice at naka ng MWSS. Kasi po, nailatag na po nila yan dyan. Uh, nais ko lamang pong ipalawanag na sa katotohanan po, ang uh, pamahalaan po as represented by the regulatory office and MWSS board are always a party doon po sa pagsiset ng rates. Hindi naman po unilateral on the part of uh, Manila Water or Maynilad yung pagsiset ng taripa. Ang uh, pinaliwanag po namin na uh, nag-uumpisa po yan doon sa kung ano po muna ang gusto ng MWSS na pagawa sa amin. Kaya po yung halimbawa po kanina na kung sasabihin ng MWSS na magkakaroon ng liban dam, kami po ang sasagot ng uh, tinatawag na uh, debt service kami po ang magpapagawa ng treatment plant at saka ano, yun po ay kasama doon sa mga bagong service obligations. Pagkatapos po ng service obligation, papakita po namin sa kanila yung kwenta kung magkano po yung aming gugugulin. Yung pong concession fee na babayaran namin, nanggaling na po sa kanila yon At pagkatapos lamang po na makita namin kung magkano yung tamang gugugulin, doon lamang po na establish ang rate. Kaso, ang ibig pong sabihin, ang uh, pamahalaan through the MWSS and the regulatory office are a party. Hindi po ito unilateral on our part. Hindi po kami lamang ang nagko-compute nito. Isinusumiti po namin lahat yan sa MWSS at regulatory office para po magkaroon ng gawad kung ano po ang rate na dapat namin matanggap and also in accordance with what we consider to be the fair return para uh, doon po sa investment namin pong gagawin, Mr. Chairman. But, uh, Mr. Chair, no? Congressman Sarate, you, you may want Maynilad to reply? Sige, Maynilad. Maynilad. Yes, Mr. Chairperson, um, we follow the same process as, my, as Manila Water. The process of uh, rate setting, rate rebasing, and following the, the lead coming from the MWSS regulatory office is the same process as in Maynilad. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, but, uh, just the same, no? Uh, kaya... Uh, Direct yung aking tanong eh. Are you willing to have this uh, provision deleted? Because that's the very provision you cited when you went to arbitr uh, arbitral uh, proceedings. No? Totoo, uh, during, uh, doon naman sa rate setting, eh, talaga andyan ang regulatory office. But after, uh, after the, uh, na-deny yung, or hindi binig pinagbigyan yung gusto ninyong rate, because of that non-interference provision, pumunta kayo doon sa Singapore. At yan ang, yan ang uh, talagang dahilan bakit nagkaroon ng 10.2 billion award ngayon. Tapos ngayon, sasabihin nyo, okay, we can waive that. But what about if there's a new administration na hindi, uh, uh, hindi magsasabi na i-renegotiate? Uh, ano or walang malakas na panawagan sa mamamayan? Or kahit merong malakas na panawagan sa mamamayan ay nagbibimingihan lang kayo? That provision is still in your contract and you can always invoke that. So, the question now is, kung uh, you are willing to move forward, uh, willing ba kayo na alisin yung provision na yan? No? Na uh, every time the, uh, the, the rate you, you prayed for are denied, 
ay pupunta kayo doon sa arbitral rule, uh, arbitral court, no? So yun, that's the, the that's the crux of the matter here. Ngayon, sasabihin niyo kaya lumalabas na parang magpapasalamat pa ang mga tao sa inyo dahil ni wave nag-wave kayo. What about next time? As for as long as that provision is there, there's a possibility na magkakaroon uli ng award, no? So kaya yun yung tinatanong natin point blank, Mr. Chair, no? The, of course there are other provisions that uh, the DOJ considered onerous, but this is one of the uh, most onerous provision embedded in that contract, uh, in that concession agreement, Mr. Chair. Marilo Water Manila, I think kailangan yung iklaro yung naging proseso kasi hindi ko alam particular doon sa Manila Water kasi yung Manila, uh, Congressman sa natin, nangyari yan, nag-file sila. Natalo si Manila Water, nanalo si Manila. Sabi ni MWSS, hindi pwede. Dahil yung kabila, panalo yung kabila, talo. Nanalo na to sa appeals, nagkaroon ng appeals dito which consisted of uh, yung mga tao select, selected by MWSS, selected by uh, Maynila, tapos isang mutually acceptable. Nung manalo sila dito, ayaw pa rin ipa-implement. Doon sila tumakbo ngayon sa Singapore. So ang tanong ni Congressman Sanate, I think kailangan ilinaw nyo yung, ano, ha, yung naging usapan na nagkaroon din kayo ng appeals dito sa lokal. Tama po, Mr. Chair, you, the way you explained it, because we won in the local arbitral proceedings, and when uh, Manila Water lost, uh, MWSS did not want to implement uh, any of the ruling, so <coughs> hindi ho na implement yung, yung decision dito sa local. So ang tanong ni Congressman Sarate, ito yung ginagamit ninyo namang armas na provision. Ano ba to? Ayaw nyo ba itong tanggalin o pwede magkaroon ng compromise o anong gagawin natin? Because eventually, Congressman Sarate, pag-uusapan din nila yan eh. How do we now address that provision? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Exactly what you said. Ito po ay kasama sa inilatag ng eh, DOJ na mga provisions na kailangan namin pag-usapan with them. Together. Hindi ho pa pwedeng isa-isa lang. Yung buong nilista nila gusto nilang pag-usapan all together. So, wala pa po kayong posisyon dyan? Wala pa po kasi, in fact, um, after MWSS wrote us a letter of the provisions that they want to review, nang hingi po kami ng meeting sa MWSS para mapag-usapan anong rational and how to move forward. Manila Water, wala pa rin ang posisyon? Ang, uh, ang sinasabi po namin kahapon pa po ay yung uh, gusto na mangyari, Mr. Chairman, is uh, to be able to put all of these issues that you have identified as well as the DOJ to that uh, working group and then to come up with a total solution. Because one, kung yung pong mga pirapiraso, maaari pong magkaroon ng give and take doon. Kung nakikita po natin na uh, mayroong compensating element doon sa ibang mga provision na mapag-uusapan po. Mr. Chairman. Last point, Kogs Masarate. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, kaya gusto ko lang malinaw, Mr. Chair, no? dahil wala pa palang malinaw na posisyon ang dalawang cons concessioners, both Manila and Manila, Manila Water, eh, lumalabas na kayo na nag-wave nga sila. No? Pwede pa rin nilang i-wave. Even if wala pa silang malinaw na posisyon doon sa mga onerous uh, uh, provisions na yon, no? So that's an admission in itself na may problema doon. No? Kung talagang naliniwala kayo na may karapatan kayo doon sa uh, award na yon ay hindi nyo i-wave yun. No? So there's, some, there's a problem there. No? At kailangan uh, lilinawin natin yan, Mr. Chair, dahil nga, uh, sabi ko nga, kung hindi pa nag, uh, wala pang uh, uh, nag-ingay no? hanggang ang Malacanya, if there was this, uh, wala itong threat na uh, ikakancel yung inyong contract and it will be taken over by by the government or by other uh, entity ay hindi pa nagkag roon ng mga ganitong uh, desisyon no? na pwede naman palang i-wave nila. Or pwedeng, ang punto ko nga, Mr. Chair, pwede naman para nilang uh, hindi na ito uh, i-enforce o hihilingin. No? Now, uh, be that as it may, Mr. Chair, no? gusto ko rin uh, yung other issue na ni-raise kanina. Um, totoo, dito sa usapin ng uh, kaliwadam, uh, mayroong uh, utang ito, no? uh, funded by China, meron ding uh, manggagaling sa concession, concessioners, but I have to remember, again, uh, kaya 
naging mainit na isyu rin itong kaliwa dam dahil at the end of the day, ang magpapasan ulit lahat dito, hindi naman ang concessionaires, no? ang consumers pa rin. No? Uh, yung sinasabi nilang uh, investment of 15 to 18 billion for Manila and 12 billion for Manila Water, uh, at the end of the day, ang mga, ang mga consumers pa rin ang uh, papasan yan. Kaya, matanong ko sa MWSS, uh, kahit nung mga nakaraang panahon, sinasabi, sinasabi naman ninyo, merong ibang pwedeng, uh, pwedeng pagkukunan ng source of water, no? um, Metro Manila, na uh, alternative sources of water no? other than uh, Kaliwa Dam. For example, uh, yung Laguna Lake. No? Uh, there was a plan before, I don't know, it's being pursued now that it will be tapped, uh, I think, by uh, um, Maynilad, dahil mas malapit yan doon. No? So, ano nang nangyari dito? No? Instead of pursuing uh, this very expensive uh, uh, project called the Kaliwa Dam. No? Uh, hindi naman ito bago. No? Kahit na noong panahon pa, andyan na yung Kaliwa Dam. But it is, parang ngayon, mas pinapabilis yung uh, pagkararatsada nitong Kaliwa Dam. While the other supposed uh, alternative sources of uh, water for Metro Manila ay pinabayaan, uh, Mr. Chair. MWS, can you reply? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and salamat po doon sa question ni Congressman Sarate. Tayo po ay with the two concessionaires, natap na po natin ang Laguna Lake. Meron po tayo sa Maynila na putatan, water, uh, abstracting water from Laguna. Ang kabuuan po nito ay 400 million liters per day. On the side naman po ng Manila Water, meron po tayong Cardona. Kumukuha po tayo ng 100 million liters per day sa Laguna Lake, sa Cardona Rizal. Pero dapat po nating malaman na ang ating production cost at abstraction cost sa Laguna Lake ay napaka, napakamahal kumpara po sa river. Kaya po ang even panahon po ng um, 1980s pa po, talaga pong nakalatag na sa plano ng MWSS ang water security and sustainability na maglagay po ng pangalawang uh, water source, katulad po ng uh, anggat ipo system natin. Kaya po yung sinabi po ni Congressman Pichay kanina po, yan po ang, ang ginagawa po ng MWSS to come up with a long-term water source to secure the water supply for the whole Metro Manila, portion of Cavite, Rizal, and now Bulacan province po. Nagsusupply po tayo sa Bulacan. Ang ginagawa po natin sa Kaliwa is a long term. Ito po ang phase one. Uh, meron, po po, meron pa po tayo sa master plan ng MWSS ang phase two. Tinatap po natin ang Kaliwa River at saka ang Kanan River uh, on the eastern part. Uh, na katulad na pina, sinabi po natin kay Congressman uh, Pichay na issue niya. Salamat Thank you. Po. Thank you, Congressman Sarate. We now proceed to, yeah, for the second round, uh, Congressman Sarate has already served also. From the chair of the good uh, the Blue Ribbon Committee. Uh, as acting chair, just a few questions, Mr. Chairman. Yung sa, kanina, nung nirace yung issue ng, ano, uh, non-extension of the contract, di ba? Parang uni unilateral revocation at lumalabas sa, uh, may issue na ba, may, meron na ba ginawang gano'n ng board? ng MWSS para malinaw lang sa ating lahat may action na ba ang board ng MWSS about the non-extension of the contract uh, Ms. Cleofas Thank you Mr. Chair uh, actually po yun yung po naging action ng board natin nung December 5 board meeting ni revoke po yung uh, so revoke na Ang, ex ang extension of 15 years. Ang board resolution po, extending the five, uh, 15 anong, years. Anong legal effect nun, uh, Attorney Arsadon? OGCC is recognized. Mr. Chair, pursuant to the directive of the Malacanang, uh, to cancel the, um, cancel the anong legal extension. Anong legal effect ng board resolution? By virtue resolution of that board resolution for revoking, wala na pong basis yung extension ng... Um, concession agreement because that board resolution was the basis for the extension. extension po. Uh, I want to know, see the reaction of ano, ano ba, where did you find out about this already? Alam nyo na ba to? 
uh, Manila Water and Manila. May so, just recognize. Sa panig po ng Maynilad, ngayong umaga lang po a few hours, uh, one hour or plus ago, lang po namin tinanggap yung board resolution na yun. But we would like to react that it is with very grave concern that we view this action. Uh, um, and we believe also that it's, a, it's not um, proper to unilaterally revoke an agreement. Because is it an agreement or is it a, this a board resolution that they revoke, diba? Yung board is, resolution is there an extension po. agreement? Meron ba kayong extension, formal extension agreement with Opo. the Philippine government? Opo, ang... Sino ang pumirma for, in the behalf of the Philippine government? Ang presidente po ng Republika ng Pilipinas. Through the DOF. Through the Department of Finance, okay? So there's a sovereign undertaking... On the part of the Philippine government. Yes, po, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, Man Manila Water, do you have the same position as Manila? Uh, tama po yun. Kasi po, magbula pa po noong magkaroon ng original uh, extension noong 2009 ay uh, bah base po doon sa, let, doon nga po sa uh, approval ay uh, ginawa na po namin yung uh, spending plan that uh, presumes na mababawi po ang lahat ng investment natin for that extended period of time. Kamukha po nung pinag-uusapan natin kanina na kung mas uh, mahaba po yung ating recovery period, mas mababa po ang magiging epekto sa taripa. Kanya po, yung po ay ginawa na po namin noong 2009 at noong po magkaroon ng rate rebasing uli noong 2013, yun na rin po ang naging base. Pero ngayon nyo rin nalaman. Today nyo lang nalaman. Ngayon lamang po na namin nalaman. Na may board resolution na ang MWSS. Uh, ano yung resolution? Ano sinasabi ng resolution? Ms. Cleofas? Attorney Arcedon, ano sinasabi ng board resolution? OGCC is recognized. Yes, yung una pong action ng board resolution is would be revocation of board resolution numbers 2009-72 dated August 16, 2008 pertaining to the renewal or extension of the concession period of Manila Water Company. Tapos yung second action po naman pertaining to board resolution, revoking board resolution 2010-172 dated September 10, 2009, pertaining naman po sa renewal or extension of the concession period of Manila Water Services. Okay. At, uh, uh, so, uh, Mr. Okay Chair, uh, uh, further uh, po, um, uh, the concessioners are given three days from receipt of the notice to file their position on the matter. So the board could also address kung ano po yung concerns po nila. So they are given po a uh, chance naman po. So to today, ang basically receipt nila is just in this forum. Nila na-receive yung notice na meron ng board resolution uh, taking away the, the extension of 15 years. Pero yun nga, may position paper pa naman po kayo. You, uh, are you formally receiving it now, uh, Manila and Manila Water? Yes, sir. Okay. Next question. Um, I said we have to renegotiate the contract. No? Uh, sabihin natin talagang that's the point of view of the people who care about public policy and public good. No? And um, ang isa kasi sa pinakamabigat na pinirereklamo ng Manila Water at Manila ay ay nakikialam ang gobyerno sa rate setting. Tama ba? Nakikialam ka kami? O ano, kahit sinong branch ng government ay hindi pwede makialam sa rate setting at sa connection charges. Di ba? Tama ba yan, uh, Mr. Aquino? Ang uh, nais po namin ay magkaroon din po sa panig ng pamahalaan ng uh, hopefully isang boses. Kasi po, ang, uh, according doon po sa aming uh, concession agreement, ang talaga po namin kausap ay ang MWSS at Regulatory Office. Pagka po sinabi po nila sa amin na ito na po ang uh, tamang taripa at ito po ay uh, um, na-derive na dahil po doon sa capital spending at ano po yung return, ang uh, sana po, yun na po ang magiging Final resolution. Ito ang problema, no? In other words, sila po yung pamahalaan. Yes, sir. Mr. Aquino, ito, ito. I'll give you a situation, no? Sabihin nyo sa amin kung ito ay hindi nararapat. Ang regulatory office, yung nagbabantay ng karapatan ng taong bayan, ay 
nasa agreement, nasa concession agreement sila itinayo. At uh, doon po ang batayan na hanggang doon lang ang poder ng ating regulatory office. Tama ho? Ngayon, kami, kung, kami rito sa House of Representatives, meron ho kami ngayong binabalangkas na batas tungkol sa Department of Water para naman ang karapatan ng taumbayan sa tubig ay aming mapangalagaan. Ngayon, gagawa kami ng Department of Water. Magkakaroon na siya ng regulatory agency. Isa sa sumang function ng regulatory office. Ito ba ay pakikialam ng gobyerno sa inyong negosyo? Ang aming pagbantay sa karapatan ng taumbayan? Uh, sa tingin ko po, maganda pong move yun kung gagawin po ninyo yun para po magkaroon tayo ng isang unified uh, approach on the part of government. Kasi po, ang ninanais po namin, sana po uh, ay mayroong kalinawan kung uh, magkakaroon ng isang opisina eh, na mag magiging... Uh... Like, ano, ginagawa na ho namin yun. Ang tinatanong okay. ko lang ho, kung saan ayong kayo rin? Kasi baka mamaya... Pupunta kayo na Singapore, sabihin nyo, naku, nag-create sila ng bagong regulatory office. Pakikialam sa kontrata namin yan, kasi sa kontrata namin, ang regulatory office ay nasa concession agreement. Ang, ang uh, sana po na mangyari ay mailagay na po ito doon sa mga pag-uusapan ngayon with the technical group na sinatayo ng DOJ at ng MWSS. Pagka po nangyari yun, magkakaroon po tayo ng kalinawan. Kasi po, ang ninanais din po namin ay magkaroon ng pag-iwas doon sa mga provision na, nag na nagkakaroon po ng hindi pagkakaintindihan. So, pagka nagkaroon po ng, mas ng kalinawan ang karamihan dito sa mga issue na to, mas makakabuti po ito sa mamamayan. Mr. On Chairman. The, on the part of Maynilad, uh, oh, Maynilad we, we support the move to have a unified Department of Water handling the water resources of the whole country. Hindi kayo magdedemanda dahil nag-create kami ng bagong Department of Water at may bagong regulatory office. Kung isa kabubuti po ng buong bansa, definitely po susuportan po namin. Okay. So, mag-renegotiate tayo ng kontrata. Uh, paano ho yung mga ano, sa provisions on indemnification sa undertaking letters ng Philippine government? Ano ho ang inyong paningin dito kung ito'y babaguhin? Yung pananagutan ng gobyerno, kung hindi kayo magkasundo sa parang... May, may sovereign guarantee ho, di ba? Meron ba kayong willing ba kayo na i-renegotiate itong mga gantong provision? Sana po, Mr. Chairman, maisama yan doon sa overall negotiation so that there could be a total approach relative to the whole uh, uh, agreements that we're going to be having, Mr. Chairman. May needed? Yes, Mr. Chairperson. Um, buong, ang gusto rin po namin na uh, isang buong solusyon ang mapag-usapan, hindi po isang piecemeal. O sige, di, doon na tayo sa tamang direksyon. Naniniwala naman kayo ang tamang direksyon ito. Uh, Manila ay Manilad. Maganda po yung uh, mungkahi ninyo magkaroon ng Department of Water para po magkaroon ng unified strategy. And uh, maybe if I may also reiterate, ang isang napakahalagang bagay dito ay yung water source development. Kasi po, kanya tayo nagka-problema in recent months, eh dahil lang po sa kakulangan din ng tubig. Kanya po, kung uh, yun din ang magiging focus ng Department of Water, napakagandang bagay po noon. Isa, isa, isa pang pwedeng tanongin sa inyo, no? Kasi kayo ay exempted sa business taxes. At ito ay kanyang inyong pinotesta dahil yung corporate income tax ay, isinama, ay hindi isinama sa exemptions na gusto nyo. Tama ba ho yun? Mr. Chairman, uh, kagalang-galang po naming uh, congressman, nung nagsimula po yung usapin tungkol sa corporate income tax nung 2012, uh, hindi, kami po ay patuloy na nagbayad ng income tax. In fact po, up to today, from 2013, naka 12.5 billion pesos na po kami na income tax na ibinayad. 12.5 billion? Anong, a, anong kumpanya kayo? Manila Watt. Manila Water. Ang Manila, magkano na binabayad yung tax? Around 6 billion na po. 6 billion? Pero, Kasi since 2007 lang po kami nagsimula. Pero ito ay inyo gusto nyong bawiin sa rate rebasing na isama ang corporate income tax na sisigilin muli sa taong bayan. 
Mr. Chairman, ito Wait, po yung isang bagay na nais po namin mapag-usapan with MWSS. Kanya po ang uh, ninanais po namin ay uh, magkaroon ng determination of what we call as the fair return for the capital investments that we are going to be making. And uh, yung, pong, uh, yung fair return na yon hindi po yan ay iba dapat doon sa mga return na nakukuha ng lahat ng mga infrastructure investors sa Pilipinas. Uh, whether it is water, it could be tollways. Ang gusto lamang po namin is a fair return. Kasi po... Ito, ito Mr. Aquino, no? Ma ano ko lang, alam ko na po yan, no? Kasi marami po akong kontratang nabasa na tollways, negosyo nyo rin naman yan ng kasama ng Maynilad, no? Sa inyong mother company, negosyo nyo naman ng tollways, di ba? Kalax, magkasama kayo. Kayo yung magkasosyo sa Kalax, di ba? Ngayon, ngayon ang mga ang, ang uh, MPIC group ang uh, Metro Pacific Group at ang Ayala ay magkasosyo sa Kalax Expressway. Tama ho, di ba? Uh, hindi po. May nila, yes, go ahead. Ang uh, Ayala Group, hindi kasama sa sa, no? sa Kalax Expressway? Hindi po, Mr. Ano, sa LRT1, magkasama kayo? Sa LRT1 po. Ayun, magkasosyo pa rin kayo, di ba? Uh, ang lumalabas kasi sa lahat ng mga agreements, sabi natin sa tollway, any act of any branch of the Philippine government which stops the operation of a toll, uh, the stops the, the collection of a rate increase shall be deemed a depart, as a default on the part of the Philippine government. Ganun ang pagtingin nyo sa kontrata ito, di ba? Pag merong isang branch ng government na nakialam sa negosyo nyo at inabat muna yung pagtataas ng presyo, meron agad malaking pagbabayaran ng gobyerno. Di ba ganun ang gusto nyo? Sa amin po, Mr. Chairman, um, ang nais nice lamang po namin ay magkaroon ng uh, comfort yung ating mga funder. Kasi po, sa laki po ng kakailangan na nating gugulin para doon sa mga proyekto na napag-usapan kanina, hindi po makakayanan ng uh, isang uh, local financial institution. Uh, kinakailangan po ma isang malaking barkada ng mga financial fi fi financiers ang kailangang pumasok para po matagunan yung cash na kailangan. Kanya po sa amin, ang hinahanap po sana namin ay magkaroon ng isang uh, something that will give a level of comfort on the part of all of our creditors and potential creditors because the magnitudes are just so huge. Kanya po sa kanila, kadalasan, ito naman po yung hinahanap nila. Kanya po sa amin po, yun ang mahalaga na magkaroon ng uh, isang pamamaraan kung saan po yung aming uh, mga funder ay magkaroon ng, uh, ng, ng, ng panatag na mapapautang tayo sapagkat yung pagkakautang na yon ay kakailanganin okay. natin dahil, dahil sa laki ng investment po. Oh, sige ho, uh, granted. No? Sige. May nilad. Hindi, pareho na sagot yan. Hindi, pareho na sagot yan. Ngayon, isa na lang uh, bago ako mag-second round. No? Okay, Mamaya. Uh, ito kasing... Kaliwad ang pinag-uusapan kanina kasi ito ang bulk water supply na binibigay sa Maynilad para ito, sa Manila at sa Maynilad para ang tubig madistribute nyo sa buong Kamaynilaan, di ba? At sa iba sa Kabite at sa parte ng, parte ng Kabite at parte ng uh, Rizal at ng Bulacan. Ngayon, may nahalta lang akong isang bagay kasi ang tubig natin ngayon sa Maynila nagagaling sa Ipodam, di ba ho? Anggat, anggat dam, no? Anggat dam. At misan, tumatapo ng tubig ay walang ginagawa ang inyong kumpanya, lalo na may nilad naman, no? Nakita ko may mga pagkakataon, napakaraming tumatapo ng tubig, walang ginagawa ang may nilad para awatin ang pagtapo ng tubig kasi sa totoo lang, wala kayong binabayaran dahil doon, di ba? Meron ba kayong binabayaran pag may nawawala ng tubig? Sa pag may treated water na po, babayaran po namin. Na, na, na treat na po, babayaran po namin yun. Paano nyo babayaran nyo kung hindi ito, kung nasa distribution line ito at wala pa ito sa mga bahay-bahay? Kasama po sa operating cost po namin yun pag hindi namin repair ng maaga. Ganun ba yun? Ba't pinapabayagan pinapabaya ng, ng Maynilad na magtuloy-tuloy yung mga tulo kung saan-saan at hindi inaayos habang tumatapo ng tubig na binibigay ng gobyerno sa inyo. 
Patuloy po kami nagre-repair, Mr. Chairperson. Um, as of today po, 378,000 leaks na po ang na-repair na namin. So, patuloy-tuloy po rin po abang tumatanda po yung aming, ating pipelines, eh, dapat patuloy-patuloy pa rin ang pag-repair. Isa na lang paglilinaw, no? Sinabi kanina na paggawa ng kaliwa dam ay meron kayo sinasagot. Tama yun. Sinasagot nyo ang amortization ng foreign debt natin. Ibig sabihin kayo magbabayad ng utang? Tama ba yan? Kayo ba magbabayad ng utang? Through MWSS po. Through MWSS. Pero, malinaw lang, hindi ito gawa ay mabait, di ba? Ito ay babayaran din ng taong bayan. Hindi ho ito, wala kayong nililibre dito. Ito ay hindi kawang gawa ito. Negosyo pa rin sa inyo ito. Sisingilin nyo pa rin sa tao lahat ng pinasasagot sa inyo. Tama naman. Sinabi nyo, opo. Totoo po. O sige. Yun na muna, Mr. Chair. Salamat Thank you. Po. Thank you. Uh, from the Chair of the Blue Ribbon Committee, we now proceed to Congressman uh, Bonito Singson of the uh, Purbinsano Coparty List. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, I would like to uh, inquire uh, with the concessioners. The rate structure, uh, the rate structure in their billing uh, forms, no? How many items are there uh, uh, till you get to the bottom line? Uh, uh, kindly reply from Manila Water in the billing or in the billing statement. What are the it? Ano po yung mga kasama dun sa pagkana bill ng tubig sa mga bahay bahay? Oh. Hmm? Ah, ito po, Mr. Chairman. Uh, pre uh, basic water charge. Tapos meron po tayong uh, CPI. May... Okay, Lino po. Isa-isa. Opo. Ano po yung una? Teka lang po. Sige po. Sorry po. Basic water charge po. Basic water charge. Uh, environmental charge. Ito po yung sa sewer. Opo. Uh, meron din po tayong, uh, yun nga po, sewerage charge. Ha? Uh, Iba pa yun. Ano pa yung environmental? Sige, sige po. And then maintenance service charge at saka po yung value added tax. Maintenance. So, bale limang including but five items. There are five items. Tapos meron din po tayong FCDA. Ano po yun? Yun yung foreign currency adjustment po. Six. Uh, <clears throat> hmm. So, six items. Uh, six items. Uh, Mr. Chair, pwede natin matanong, um, alin dito sa anim na items na to ang automatic, ang adjustment? No? Kasi we're talking about now the uh, basic uh, charge lang, no? basic rate, which is the subject of this... Uh, ano, hearing. Pero there are other six uh, chargeable items that uh, are included in your billing. Is this true for the two concessionaires? Parehong pareho? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, among these six items, no, aside, uh, aside from the basic charge, uh, bali lima, alin dito yung automatic na nagkakaroon ng adjustment of which the two concessionaires basically also has a say And basically, MWSS has no say kasi automatic ito eh. Uh, Mr. Chairperson, wala pong automatic na, na mapapataw sa ating mga consumer without the approval of the MWSS regulatory office. Uh, hindi ba formulated, let's say for example, yung sa FCDU, FC, ano, foreign exchange? Yes sir, but uh -huh. it still has to pass through the the MWSS review. So, uh, when the exchange rate, for example, no, this is just one item, uh, is very volatile, no? uh, how long does it take you for 
to have the MWSS approved. One quarter po, every quarter. Every quarter. Uh, single rate, ano lang yun? In, you average the, kwan? Uh, every quarter lang adjustment nun. So every quarter, both for Manila Water and Manila. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, yesterday we also uh, decided or uh, discussed to uh, invite other parties uh, have the invitations been out like because uh, it came out yesterday that the um, one one party for example is the ACRA law office ACRA law office uh, represented the government during the negotiation with the concessioners and then when I asked the question uh, the two concessioners now also retain ACRA so the potential conflict of interest. Sila nakipag-negotiate on behalf of government, ngayon naman, nandun sila sa customer side. Yung financial consultant, yung NERA, the same. Uh, sila yung nag-advise sa atin, the Philippine government, also now consultants of Maynila and Manila Water. Uh, Comsec, can you please uh, reply to the query of the Honorable Singson? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Kasi... Kung, Singson, yung mga invitasyon po. Uh, I, with the uh, uh, legal counsel of the Philippine government during the signing of the agreement between uh, the two concessioners. Ang uh, lumabas kahapon that uh, the Philippine government was aided by uh, law office and I think it was ACRA that was mentioned. No? So representative... Mr. Chair, uh, if, if that is the case, then that is totally but, but a violation wait, of the, the, legal Just a minute, ethics. just a minute. Uh, we invited what? them yesterday. So, Comsec, can you reply? What happened to that? Were invitations sent out? The invitation, the additional invite is for today, which was sent out last night. It's uh, the office of the Secretary, uh, Office of the Solicitor General, which represented the government during the execution or the uh, signing of the contract. Also, we invited, as requested yesterday, the BIR. Uh, the Is the BIR here? Wala. Okay. We also invited uh, the uh, Philippine Competition Commission. They are present now, Your Honor. Yes, they are. And yes. we also invited from the Office of the Government uh, Governance Commission for GOCC. Fortunately, we were able to send invitation for the ACRA law firm. And the, the OJ uh, is also here. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Yes. And the invitation, uh, the requested invitation to the signatories of the uh, contract, as we haven't had the list of these signatories yet. The kapon na uh, komsek nagkaroon tayo ng agreement that imbitahin natin si Acra, si yung Nera, yung financial consultant, yung pirma na ng kontrata si Lito Lazaro. Uh, Secretary Vejilar, who was the lead of that time, uh, for the renewal, I would think, kanina tinanong na ni Congressman Boeing Rimulia, Secretary Tevez was the one who signed on behalf of the Philippine government representing the Republic. So, yung, hindi lang DOF yun. So, if, Comsec, can you please uh, list it down? Yeah, he was here yesterday. So, they are now in the Senate. So, we have here the Deputy Administrator of the MWSS. So, Comsec, can you please list it down para lang pag tinanong, may update tayo dun sa mga invitations. Uh -huh. So, again, if I may reiterate, ACRA, NERA, uh, Secretary Tevez, Lito, Secretary Velar, uh, Chairman Lito Lazaro at that time, si Mark Dumol, I think is very critical. Alam na, alam niya yung nangyari. Chief of Staff of Secretary Velar. Dumol. Dumol. So, okay, Congressman Singson. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, if, in addition, uh, like for example, uh, the uh, ACRA law office uh, aided the Philippine government during the negotiation. So, if we may request also for them to prepare by bringing in whatever documents related to this issue. No? Uh, we're doing this uh, uh, simply because well, they represented our interest. The, I mean, the Philippine government, no. So we have uh, they can enlighten us on how come that they, uh, they ended up signing a uh, onerous uh, concessional uh, concessioners agreement. 
uh, they're supposed to be the top uh, uh, law firm no, of the country. So the documents, if they can be para, so that we, we can uh, expedite. If we'll ask for information, meron sila. Hindi yung, we will. We, so we the manifestation uh, of the Honorable Singson is that we write ACRA. Kasi sinasabi ni Comsec, uh, Congressman Singson, medyo nahirapan sila to get the addresses of the others. Pero sabi ko nga yung ACRA, dyan lang naman. And then as advised by the Honorable Singson, that we already asked them of the pertinent, of the documents pertinent to this issue. So, Congressman Singson? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, another one is, uh, uh, my next question is, Mr. Chair, are the two concessioners paying the salaries of the MWSS or maintaining their office of the MWSS now? MWSS, kindly reply. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Under the concession agreement, the concessioners, Manila Water and Manila, has to pay an annual concession fee to MWSS. That takes care of our um, uh, operating budget as, aside from our income from our leases of property, Mr. Chair. Uh, so, Mr. Chair, the annual concession, what do you call it, ma'am? Concession P, Mr. Is uh, how much in terms of? Uh, right now, it's about uh, one billion, five hundred million each from the two concessioners. Five hundred million. Is this a fixed uh, rate or uh, based on uh, billing or revenue? This is uh, adjusted based on consumer price index. <coughs> Can. Uh, can we request for the formula that you are using and uh, or the policy which is uh, one or is it is this in the agreement the concession. concession agreement the formula baka yes. pwede lang pong ipa submit yung computation na to uh, mm. kasi nakal uh, nakalagay dito po dito sa concession agreement well it is for one no i think for the uh, same is that uh, supposedly every year ang uh, review ng rates uh, and th this is being done every year or more, uh, every quarter Mr. Chair ang rates po is uh, for the two concessioner is being done every five years pero yung pagbabayad po ng concession fee sa, sa MWSS is every year at uh, the start of the year Mr. Chairman Okay, so yung formula na lang po no, kung ano um, so, yung binibigay sa inyo na 1 billion, yun po yung para sa opisina. And uh, you made mention earlier that there are about 100 employees of MWS. That's your plantilla Kwan, position. Mr. Chair, uh, ang MWSS po ay nagkaroon ng uh, recent reorganization. Naging 150 po yung aming uh, plantilla position, at iyan po ay kasalukuyang pinipil up po namin yung uh, plantilla position. Kasama Mr. na po Chair. dyan ang regulatory office? Different po, Mr. Chair. So, ilang po ang regulatory office? For the regulatory office, Mr. Chair, we have um, 71 plantilla positions. 50, Congressman Singson, and yes. 71. 150, and uh, there, uh, your budget basically is 1 billion. Uh, hindi yung tumataas yun, no? yung concessioner... Uh, uh, yung ng dalawang, ano. Mr. Chair, uh, yan po ay ina-adjust uh, every year uh, based on the Consumer Price Index, CPI. Ayun, yun, uh -huh. bibigay nyo sa amin yung formula, di ba? Uh -huh. uh -huh. Gusto Thank ko lang you. pong i -ano na yung 1 billion ng, na concession fee project, yung pong budget ng regulatory office, I once approved po ng Board of Trustees ang kanilang budget, ay binibigyan po ng corporate office ng budget ang regulatory office. Aside from that, ang corporate office po ang nagbabayad ng mga real estate property tax ng mga asset na niretain po ng corporate office. Including po yung um, improvement ng aming facilities na nasa pangalaga pa rin pa ng corporate office. Thank you. Mr. Singson, uh, can you wind up? Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, eh, 
Uh, I just want to go back on the what was discussed also yesterday. No, the charges that were made by the two concessioners for future projects that were never implemented, and I think this run in the billions. No, and uh, there was a claim that they already reimbursed this, uh, and the way they reimbursed this was not clear because. Uh, uh, there were comments that dapat uh, lump sum monthly hindi yung the answer of the concessioners yesterday was that it resulted in the downtrend down you know, downtrend of rate uh, which nobody could basically understand also and there was no total uh, so Mr. Chair uh, uh, when can, when when did they commit to submit to us the, the total uh, the regulatory involved? office. Kapuno, napag-usapan yung live and dam, in-include nyo sa billing, tapos hindi nyo tinuloy. Ang sinabi nyo, dinanward pricing nyo. Sinasabi ni Congressman Sixon, hindi klaro sa kanya yon Kasi I think in the case of Meralco, yun ang ginagamit na example kapon, sino uli talaga? So maybe if you can give us a just, yung justification, bakit ganun yung ginawa at ano yung naging epekto? Kasi hindi natin alam kung binabalang ninyo yung presyo, ano ba talaga yung naging epekto? I think that is the point of Congressman Singson. Is that correct, Congressman? Yes. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Kasi uh, sabi nila, na, number one, ilang ba yung nakolekta nyo for these projects? Ilang bilyon? And then, uh, it's not uh, clear. Maybe Paano you wanted to, ilang bilyon nakolekta nyo doon? Sa live band dam project na tinanggal later on. Uh, based on the commitment yesterday by the regulatory office, we have uh, now. We are now calculating, and we will provide this com honorable committee of uh, what we have. Uh, no, Thank you. Okay, Congressman Singson. Uh, yes, second. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, on the second round, uh, you will still you serve the right to yes. ask questions. Yes. Before yes, we continue, Mr. let me recognize the Honorable uh, Loli Papuano Dison, Honorable Franz Castro, the Honorable Ron, the Vice Chairperson of the Committee on Public Accounts, Ron Salo, and the Honorable uh, Sara Ilago. Uh, also, from the Senior Deputy Majority Floor Leader and the Acting Chairman of the Blue Ribbon Committee of the House, those who will be staying will be uh, recognized as present in the, on the floor because we will have the, our session at 1 o'clock. Medyo ano na po? 11.42. Yes. And those who will stay will have their free lunch provided by... Uh, Congressman Barbers of the Committee on Illegal Drugs. So, okay. Next will be Congressman <coughs> Congressman Viloso. Three manifestations. Uh, Congressman Viloso, a manifestation by Congressman Garbin. Uh, Mr. Chair, may we know whether the presence of um, Rinaldo Velasco uh, is he here? Uh, because um, in the... Um, Memorandum from the executive of the secretary. Uh, he was uh, de designated as administrator of MWSS. And um, since he's yesterday, not here. Uh, he's his not here. presence is conspicuously absent. So why is it that... Uh, no, con uh, Administrator Velasco is not the current. He was the former administrator. But he was addressed by... Uh, in, 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 in the uh, executive secretary memorandum, he was addressed as administrator. What is his current position right now? Mr. Chairman, the General Reynaldo Velasco is now the chairman of the Board of Trustees. Chairman of the Board of Trustees. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. May we also request, Mr. Chair, uh, before this committee, that he will be invited in the next scheduled hearing to appear to appear before this joint committee. Thank you for Thank that. You. So we will also invite the Chairman Velasco again, no, from the committee secretariat. They are, medyo nagpa, nakikiusap na sila yung iba kasi mahirap makita. But of course, Acra, uh, Chairman Velasco, pwedeng makita. Ang hindi natin malukit is uh, Lito Lazaro, uh, Secretary Velar, Mark Numol, and uh, well, Secretary Tevez, I would think, pwede natin malocate, no? Because there are also uh, congressmen from their from his district who would probably know his location. So we we continue with uh, uh, Justice Congressman Beloso. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Uh, few admissions that I'd like to get from. Uh, Manila Water and uh, Manila. 
First, uh, do you admit that uh, Manila Water and Manila are public utilities? I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, that was uh, an yeah, okay. item that we had uh, said that uh, ayon po doon sa concession agreement, naka sinasabi po doon na kami ay agent of MWSS para po kaming uh, service provider ng MWSS. Yung po ang nakasaad sa kontrata. You are not answering my question. <clears throat> ang tanong ko directly sa inyo. Public utility ba, by definition of law, ang Manila at saka Manila Water? Ang uh, MWSS po, ang tinuturing po namin public utility, kami po ay kinontratan lamang nila, kanya po hindi po namin masabi na kami ay public utility. Kasi po, ang kontrata po namin sa kanila would really be specifically only as an agent. Manila, kindly reply. The same, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairperson, we consider Maynilad as a, an agent of MWSS. As function, are you functioning as a public utility, Maynilad, as well as uh, Manila Water? Sir, we are a contractor of MWS. We are distributing water for them. I am not asking about your legal personality. You have been answering me about agency, contractor, as a function. Ang trabaho po ninyo. Alam niyo naman ang trabaho ninyo, di ba? Ano po ang trabaho ng Maynila? Distributing water, potable and safe water. Very good. To distributing water to? To our consumers. To, meaning it's a public service. Di ba? Yes, sir. For and behalf of MWSS. Hindi pa ko, wala pa ko roon. Darating tayo dyan. Uh, your Manila Water? Manila. Uh, Manila. Okay. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, inamin ng uh, Manila Water na nagdi-distribute sila ng water as a public service to consumers. Totoo po ba yun? Uh, Manila Water, can you reply? We are performing what is uh, nakasaad po doon sa concession agreement po namin na ang kasama po doon ay ang uh, pag-distribute ng tubig sa ating mga consumer. Okay. Sa pag you are president of uh, what company? Nung Manila Water po, uh, from... Uh, up to 2009, uh, Mr. Ngayon, Chairman. Uh, I'm a member of the board of the Manila Water, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Sa pagkakaintindi mo po, in your capacity as uh, officer of that company, ang trabaho ng company nyo is a public service ba? Hindi. Ang ginagawa po namin ay nakaka-apekto sa serbisyo para sa mamamayan, Mr. Chairman. Now, didiretsyon ka lang kasi tatlong minuto lang po ako eh. Sige po, uh, hindi pa naman ho. Yung tatlong nyo po ang pwedeng tat uh, li limang minuto po, Congressman Viloso. Okay, sige. Thank you. Now, sino nagsabi na agent lang po kayo ng MWSS? Yan po yung nakasaad doon sa concession agreement po natin na binigay po sa amin nung kami po ay mag-umpisa noong 1997. Malinaw po na nakasaad doon na ang papel po namin is to be an agent of MWSS, okay. Mr. Chairman. So, that is true to both Manila and Manila Water? Yes, Mr. Chairperson. Agent lang ko kayo ng MWSS. Question, by what authority of law can you function as an agent of MWSS? Pwede itong sagutin ng MWSS. Mr. Chairman, I mean, Congressman Viloso, would you want uh, MWSS to reply to that? Or? Yes, uh, Your Honor. 
or Manila or Manila MWSS? Uh, silang tatlo. Okay. Kasi I am uh, directing actually uh, the thrust of my question, Mr. Chair, is uh, both Manila and Manila Water are performing public services, functioning as public utilities in the guise of being plainly agents of MWSS. So I need an admission against their respective interests. Okay, from both MWSS, Manila, and Manila Water. MWSS. Okay, before you before you continue to to reply to the Honorable Veloso, some of you were not sworn in. Yesterday uh, we swore in the the resource person. So may I re request the comsec before they reply to be sworn in? Sino po yung mga hindi natin kasama kahapon? Comsec. From uh, MWSS, Attorney Sorena, Attorney Choigan, Attorney Cleofas. Uh, from, uh, I'm sorry, from OG, ano kayo, no? OGC. No, I'm sorry, OGC is here. Sino pa po bang hindi natin kasama? Yeah, kindly stand na lang po kasi kung di ko kahapon, isa na lang naiwan tumayo nung hindi na paswar in. Uh, the two guests are from the PCC, okay, and the legal of uh, Maynilad, okay, Comsec. Kindly raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before this joint meeting? So help you God. Thank you. Thank you. Kaya ako kayo sinuwarin, baka pagalitan ako ni Justice Veloso pagka... Hindi ko nagawa. Okay. Please reply, MWSS, to the Honorable Veloso. Um, Mr. Chair, um, it has been our uh, position... Oh, GCC, uh, Congressman Veloso is the one replying. Yes, Mr. Chair, it has been our position that the two concessionaires are public utilities because um, they derive the authority to operate from MWSSS, which was given the franchise, Mr. Chair. So they are public utilities, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, MWSS, so, would you like to reply? Mr. Chairman, I defer to our lawyers. Okay, so Manila Water, kindly reply. Mr. Chair, kami po ay sumusunod lamang po doon sa nakasaad sa concession agreement na finormulate ng MWSS. At yun lamang po ang aming uh, posisyon na magagawa. For Manila? Same po, sir. Uh, our concession agreement states that we are agents. Uh, Congressman Veloso, medyo may pagkakaiba po, no? Please continue. Anyway, uh, tutuloy ko lang. Masarap mang huli. Uh, next question. MWSS. You said that uh, MWSS has been franchised by the government to operate a public utility. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chair, yes. And that is pursuant to Article 12, Section 11 of the Constitution. I, and the RA 6234, uh, 6, 6, Mr. Chair. The Charter of MWSS, Mr. Chair. Yes, but uh, the overarching uh, authority is uh, Article 12, yes, Section Mr. 11. Yes, Mr. Chair. And it says that only Congress can issue a franchise certificate or authority to operate. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Now, you issued your authority to both Manila and Manila Water on the basis of what law? Um, National Water Crisis Act of 1997. Seven. Uh, 95, Mr. Chair. Uh, there was an executive order issued by the president. My understanding is that uh, you have an executive order. Yes, yes, which uh, eventually served as basis to 
enter into a concession agreement between MWSS and Manila, Manila Water, on the other hand. Yes, Is that Mr. correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. That executive order was issued pursuant to I'm Republic sorry. Act 8041? Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. The National Water Act. Okay. Will you please tell this representation if there is any provision in RA 8041 which authorized the president? Because there it speaks of the president. It did not speak of uh, Manila Water or MWSS. It authorized in Section 6 thereof the president to enter into negotiated contracts for the financing, construction, repair, rehabilitation, etc. Now, where is the authority given to the president to re-delegate that delegated power by Congress to the president? To re-delegate that power to MWSS? Uh, Mr. Chair, there is section seven of the same law. And it reads? Uh, the reorganization of the Metropolitan Water Works and Sewer System and the Local Water Works and Utilities Administration, Mr. It Chair. It speaks by title reorganization. Yes, Mr. Chair. No it way. did not speak of any authority from, um, because para maintindihan mga mamamayan. Yes, po. Meron, meron pong nakalagay po doon na meron siyang authority. Sandali lang, okay. sandali lang. Yes, Mr. Chair. Para maintindihan ng mga mamamayan. Sa ating uh, sal saligang batas, only Congress can issue a franchise, certificate, or authority to operate a public utility. Totoo po ba yun? Tama po. Okay. Kongreso lang po ang pwede mag-issue ng franchise, certificate, or authority to operate ng public utility. Yes, po. Ibinigay yan ng Kongreso <coughs> to MWSS as a franchisee. Yes, Bob. Okay. And this was uh, pursuant to Republic Act 60, 30, 6234, <clears throat> which created in Section 2 the MWSS. Tama po ba yun? And meron tayong uh, lumabas from Congress, Republic Act 8041, July 7, 1995, which authorized in Section 6 the President to enter into negotiated contracts. Pwede sana diretso from the President tuloy sa Maynilad, Opo. sa Manila Water. Okay? Now, yun ang katanungan ko po. Kasi standard or accepted dictum yan, what has been delegated cannot be redelegated. Di ba? Tama po. Ah, pare tayo mga abogado. Okay, tama. Yun ang hinahanap ko. Nasaan sa Republic Act ang nagsasaad na ang MWSS ay pwede magbigay ng uh, franchise certificate or authority to operate to Manila or to Manila, to Manila Water. Wala akong nakita doon. <coughs> From MWSS. Okay, nakalagay lang doon sa 8041 ang presidente. But even that, the president is different from MWSS. MWSS is a chartered government owned and controlled corporation. Kaya nga ikaw ang abogado, di ba? Tama po. Okay, yun ang hinahanap ko. Because alam mo pa ang 1306 ng civil code? Condition. No contract shall be entered. can be entered into that is contrary to law, morals, or public policy. Ito ang meet of it all. The so-called 12 onerous contract, uh, provisions ng kontrata, na pupuntahan ko po mamaya, kaya lang mauubos na yung time ko. Babalikan ko po, doon lang po tayo sa authority na ibinigay ng batas sa MWSS na i-franchise ang uh, Manila Water at saka Manila. Thank you.
Thank you, Congressman Viloso. Napakaganda uh, po nun, at least even the executive will be given guidance na yung pong binabanggit ninyo, from, kung from day one may mali, eh dapat i-correct yan. At ano yung mga dapat na solusyon legally para ayusin. So, thank you for that, Congressman Viloso. We now proceed to... Uh, Oh, let me first recognize the debonair Congressman Pido Barsaga. Thank you. Pido Barsaga. P Pido, Pido is the younger version. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. And the from the minority, the Congressman Carabs Paduano. May I now recognize uh, Congressman Eric Pineda. Vice Chairperson of the Committee on Good Government. Uh, thank you, Mr. Classmate, Chairman. Chairman. Uh, ang gusto ko lang kasing intindihin ay uh, they went to all the troubles. These two uh, water concessionaires uh, nag-file ng mga cases, umabot hanggang Singapore, nag-arbitrate, Nagkaroon ng award. So, nung nagkaroon ngayon ng alingaw nga sa publiko, ang bilis sila pong umatras. Because I believe, Mr. Chairman, these two water concessionaires, or what they call themselves as service providers, they are not in the business. I mean, this is not part of their corporate social responsibility. Pumasok po sila dito para kumita po ng pera. Oh, negosyante po sila eh. Unang-una, hindi naman papayag yung mga negosyante niya. Ayala Group yan. MVP Group. Eh, hindi naman papayag yan magpalugi. Pero ang lumalabas po dito, ang hindi ko maintindihan, meron silang award na, ang award po ng Maynilad is 3.4. Ang award po ng Manila Water is 7.4. Uh, in the blink of an eye, they're willing to forego this, di ba? Ayun ang hindi ko po maintindihan. Yun ang gusto kong sagutin po nila na bakit sila papayang magpalugi whereas that is not good corporate uh, business practice. Ibig sabihin nun, sa aking pananaw, eh, ito pong kinikilin po na to, eh, kita po to eh. Diba? Kung baga, they are willing to give it up kasi hindi naman... Sa totoo lang, hindi ako maniniwala na malaking systems loss nila, whatever. Kasi, nung nag-file sila noong 2013, kasi pati yung corporate income tax, gusto nilang isigilin sa mga consumers, di ba? Pati tinatang na difference on foreign exchange rate. So, marami ditong hidden agenda na yun ang gusto ko po sagotin nila, na bakit ang bilis po nilang, uh, kumbaga sa ano, kumabiyo sila bigla at sinabi, oh sige, di na, di na maniningil. Pero they pursued it for several years hanggang umabot ng Singapore, nanalo po sila, tapos ngayon biglang binitawan nila kagad. Yun lang po gusto kong masagot ng dalawa po, Mr. Chairman. Ito po yung natanong kanina, Congressman Pineda, pero irritate natin, no, for the record. And ito, natanong yan ni Congressman Garbin kanina, but if you may ask Malira Water and my to reply, uh, Mr. Aquino, Ano, Mr. Chairman, kung talagang they're willing to make a formal waiver of, of these fees na sinasabi nilang hindi nila sisingilin if they will formally waive kasi mahirap yung public statement tsaka iba naman yung gagawin ng legal nila pagkatapos. Uh, Are you willing to, to waive it uh, in writing uh, yung, yung board nyo? Congressman uh, Rimula, this was uh, asked yesterday by Congressman Pitts Barsaga. They made two statements. One is the resolution to waive it, and number two, a formal letter that they will craft in order and, and give to the Philippine government. They committed to give the two letters to us, the resolution and the letter. Just for the clarification, Mr. Chairman, my inquiry would, was about the waiver of the 7.4 and 3 billion kami, uh, based on the statements of the Manila Water and Manila that they would no longer be collecting. Opo. Because as a lawyer, it has been our experience that sometimes oral declarations or oral promises are not complied with. And therefore, we want to have a formal document Apo. stating therein that whoever becomes the officer or the president of the Republic of the Philippines, then they would no longer be collecting that. And whatever changes will, that may happen in their corporate 
uh, setup uh, or structure, this will not be any more demanded. Yes. So, kung pwede yung sagutin ng Manila Water at Maynila to, batay dun sa panawagan ni Congressman Rimula at Congressman Barsaga, at yung pong tanong ni Congressman Pineda. Manila Kasi, Water, uh, let, let me just add po, yung nung tinanong po yung ating kaibigan na si Congressman Garbin, uh, wala ako silang definite answer eh. Diba? Kung baga, parang niligoy-ligoy. Ang gusto natin malaman, para malaman ng sambayang Pilipino, uh, bakit sila, ang bilis sila kagad na i-forgo itong patinigin na ito na 10 billion. Di ba, alig kung 10 million lang yan eh, Mr. Chairman, but this is 10 billion. And you know, like I said, these people are in, the, in this to make money, not to lose money. Kaya, if they can just answer it directly, para so, alam din po ng sambayang Pilipino kung bakit nila binibitawan ito 10 billion ito na sinisingil po nila. Pong una, yung po tinanong ni Congressman Pineda, bakit po uh, umaatras? At pangalawa, yung pong uh, commitment doon sa waiver, doon sa uh, arbitral award sa Singapore. So, Mr. Kino, may I request Manila Water to reply? Uh, susunod po kami doon sa unang uh, bagay na pagsulat sa inyo uh, noong uh, formal uh, withdrawal, noong monetary award na binigay noong Singapore panel. At uh, ang sabi po natin kahapon, uh, segun po ito sa board resolution Apo. para po ma medyo mas malinaw. Apo. At uh, it goes beyond the personalities that are present today. Apo. Doon po sa pangalawa, ang uh, nasabi po namin doon, kinailangan po namin pumunta doon sa Singaporean arbitral panel dahil po merong mga issues na sa tingin po namin ay hindi nalalaan doon sa stipulation noong concession agreement. So yun po was a matter of principle that we had wanted to make sure we are going to raise. Uh, obligasyon po namin yon na uh, masabi po sa aming mga uh, pinagkakautangan as well as our shareholders na ginawa po namin kung ano yung nasa saad doon sa concession agreement. Kung hindi po, kami po yung uh, mababatikos. Ngayon po, doon naman sa nangyari na nagkaroon ng award, pagkatapos po namin matanggap na yung award at na-establish po yung tamang prinsipyo, na tama po yung ganoong appeal panel process, kaagad na po kami nakipag-usap kaagad sa Secretary of Finance. Sinabing, can we look for a workable solution around this? And part of the workable solution, Mr. Chairman, is something similar to what you were saying earlier. Kasi sa lahat nito, kuminsan nakakatalo lamang siya doon sa ano ba yung tapang, tapat na return that dapat naming uh, makuha. And uh, I think yung, yung wording ninyo na kung makakuha tayo ng isang fair return for all of the capital investments that are going to be made would probably be the, the right principle that we should be following instead of yung magkakaroon tayo ng mga pag-aaway o hindi pagkakaintindihan dahil doon sa mga technical details pa na nahan dito. So yun po ang, ang aming pinanggalingan kung bakit pumunta kami doon. Ang sinabi nga po namin sa pag-uusap kahapon, oh, hindi na po bal mas mahalga po yung uh, prinsipyo na masunod natin, pero yung sa financial consequence, kung uh, total, eh, ito naman ay considered doon sa historical uh, losses, then siguro pwede na muna natin kalimutan yon at uh, that is why we're waving and we will have uh, that board resolution along these lines. Pero po, sana, moving forward, magkaroon ng paglilinaw at magkaroon ng assurance ang ating lahat ng ating mga pinagkakautangan as well as ang ating uh, mga future investor na magkakaroon ng fair return sa lahat ng investment na aming gagawin. Yan lamang po, Mr. Chairman. Thank Mr. you. Uh, uh, on the part of my needed, Okay. Yes, Mr. Chairperson, sa party po ng Maynila, magko-comply po kami sa nire-request na mga dokumento na kailangan namin ilagak. Pangalawa po, yung arbitral win po namin ay 2017 pa po. We have been trying to find a workable solution with government since then. And um, at to this point, uh, we are now finding a solution that we, the solution is real to sit down fully and have a w total solution to this ongoing saga of, of water. Mr. Chair. Congressman uh, Pineda. Uh, uh, as a follow-up lang, uh, if they're willing to forego the 10 billion 
and come time that we will renegotiate their contracts. Uh, hindi po kaya na gagawa ko silang paraan na para itong 10 billion na ito na hindi na makukuha, eh ipapasok po rin dito sa bagong agreement. Yun lang ang gusto ko malaman. Or talaga bang ito, 10, 10 billion na ito, kakalimutan na nila ito, we'll start with a clean uh, sheet of paper, and then uh, we'll come up with a contract. It is a win-win situation for all of us. A little water. Hindi po namin makukolekta yan at therefore po yung uh, MWSS in the regulatory office will not consider that in any of the tariff calculations that they will be doing, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Manila? Same, sir. Okay. Just say... Uh, Very short. Uh, yes. Congressman Pineda? Okay. Uh, that's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll just uh, wait for my next turn. Ito ay kaugnay ng sinabi ni Mr. Aquino na kaya sila nag-file ng asunto laban sa Republika ng Pilipinas ay sapakat baka sisihin sila ng kanilang shareholders kung wala silang gagawing aksyon para kolektahin. Ang worry ko lamang dito, kung mag-wave ba kayo, nasisigurado nyo na valid ang inyong waiver even without consulting your shareholders. E baka sabihin ng inyong shareholders, under the law, kinakailangan ang authorization manggaling sa amin sapagkat ang i-wave nyo ay 10 billion which you can give to us as dividends, cash or stock dividends at the end of the year. Yun lamang ang gusto naming malinawan. Talaga ba pwedeng i-wave yan legally at walang question na darating after the waiver? Kasi yung filing of the case, ang sabi nyo nga, you are compelled to file the case because your shareholders or stockholders would question you if you will Basaga. not be acting. Uh, can I, we, uh, that's already a, uh, a different question, but like, can we ask OSG to reply to that instead of the two companies? Yung pong uh, waiver, because we have to make sure that this will be really executed. Ang sinasabi po ng dalang kumpanya, hindi namin kukolektahin, gagawa kami resusyon, gagawa kami nasulat. Tinatanong ni Congressman Barsaga, Ano yung kasiguruhan na final na to? OSG, can you reply? Kasi kayo po makiging kausap dito. Wala po ba ang OSG? Government Council, would you know? They were the ones who handled the case in Singapore, Mr. Chair. So I, we don't know their strategy. Thank you. DOJ, would you know about this issue? No, Mr. Chair, we are not involved with the arbitral proceedings of the two concessions. Nevertheless, can we have OSG in the next hearing just to clarify this? Uh, ang susunod po, Chair, yes. Just a short interjection uh, on the issue of waiver. Can I inquire from MWSS, uh, Manila, and Manila Water? On top of this arbitral award from Singapore, is there any other arbitral award now pending in any jurisdiction, either domestic or foreign, Mr. Chair? Uh, yes. The RO, the regulatory office, would know kung may mga kaso pa kayo. Actually, there's one pending in the Supreme Court um, because in the Manila arbitration case, which they won, and they went to the regional trial court for the to, for the confirmation of such arbitral award. In the RTC, we lost. and the Court of Appeals, we also lost. So we um, went to the Supreme Court. It's still pending at this time, Mr. Chair. And uh, how much is the arbitral award now pending before the Supreme Court? Would you know? The issue in, this, in that case is the corporate income, income tax. So my related question, if I may ask. The, uh, actually, that time would be taken from Congressman Gaite. Okay, okay. But, uh, yes, uh, kasi nasa po, na po. Are they also willing uh, to waive this arbitral award? Because it also stems from the same concession agreement na hinihingi nila yung kanilang income tax uh, as part doon sa expense no, na pwede nilang ipasa doon sa mga consumers, Mr. Chair. Can May we get my an Nila answer? Manila and Manila Water. Yes, the legal of uh, Maynilad. Magandang tanghali po, Mr. Chairman. So the, the petition is now pending with the Supreme Court, and it is actually the MWSS regulatory office that is the petitioner here. So basically, once it is with the Supreme Court, 
it, it's yes, there. Yes, Mr. Chair, but uh, in the same spirit that uh, you were saying earlier that you were willing to move forward, uh, especially now that this concession agreement is under question because of some onerous provisions, and that award now pending before the Supreme Court also involves these provisions. Now, if you can waive 10 billion dun sa Singapore Arbitral Award, uh, what about this now pending before the Supreme Court, Mr. Chair? Kahapon po, nung tanungin ko yung dalawang concessionaire, Manila Water and Maynilad, sinabi ko, pwede nyo bang i-commit na tanggalin nyo na yung corporate income tax as long as may determination of what this adjust rate of return, umuupo sila. So I do not know if that is already a acceptance of whatever will happen in the Supreme Court ruling. So may we ask Manila at Manila Water? Uh, I confirm so yung sinabi nyo, Mr. Chair, that um, the CIT is a discussion that can be and be had as long as meron pong determination ng fair return of our long-term infrastructure investment. Manila Water? Sana po ito yung isang bagay na maipasa doon sa working committee na para po magbigyan ng linaw kung paano po yung madederive natin yung tinatawag nating fair return para sa mga investments that we will be making, Mr. Chairman. Ang tanong po ni Kong Sarate, yung corporate income tax, which is a subject of the Supreme Court, kung willing po kayong iatras? I waive. Pero ang petitioner is regulatory office. Kayo din ang nagpapa-wave. MWSS or regulatory office? Ah, okay. Ed, uh, may nilad? Yung in, in nga ho, ang regulatory office ho nag-file. So, ah, sa Supreme Court, parang hindi ho namin alam kung pwede pa kung mak makialam doon. We can... If they will agree to that position, to our position, that the CIT should not be passed on to the consumers, then we can file a joint manifestation before the Supreme Court. So, ang sinasabi ng mga kumpanya, batay doon sa negosasyon sa eksekutibo, willing kayong iatras yan. Yes, that should be included po in sa discussions with the working group. Attorney Yersa Don. Yes, Mr. Uh, Chair. Is it the position of uh, Manila and Manila Water, kaya kaya na file ng case, na sila dapat ay tax exempt? Sa corporate income tax? Their Is that your position, uh, Mr. Aquino? Po, sa katotohanan po, nagbabayad po kami ng income tax. Ang uh, pinagtatalunan po natin dito ngayon ay kung magkano ang return that we should be entitled to dahil po sa mga investments na aming ginagawa. At doon po, ang uh, basic guidance po dyan, yung nakasaad din po sa concession uh, agreement na sinasabi na kung ano ang rate of return that... Uh, Teka, sandali lang po. No? Kasi, tinatanong kasi, ang, so, kung tama ho yung pagkaalala ko, sa concession agreement, exempted kayo sa business taxes. Hindi, Hindi po. po nakalagay income tax. Hindi po. Nakalagay po doon, uh, mag, nagbabayad po kami ng business taxes. O dahil yung business taxes kasi, pwede niyong bawiin. At sinasabi kaya ng ng RO, ng regulatory office, yung corporate income tax, hindi nyo pwede bawiin. Tama ba ho yun? Is that the position? I think ang position po namin, ang dapat na pong return namin ay kung ano ang naaayon sa mga investment na gagawin na long term. Kasi yung, basically, ang indirectly, sinasabi nyo, exempted kayo sa income tax. Tama ba hindi po yun? Hindi po. Sa katotohanan po, Every year po, nagbabayad po kami ng approximately 2 billion pesos a year. Pero gusto nyo singilin pa rin sa taong bayan yung buwis na binabayaran nyo? Uh, uh, alam po, hindi po namin nais na ganoon ang lumabas doon sa ating mga diskusyon. Kasi po, ang nakasaad lamang po doon sa ating concession agreement is kung mag invest kayo ng ganitong kahalagahan, let's say 10 billion hindi pesos. Uh, we, are, we live under a regime where taxes are inevitable like death. Yes. Di ba ho? Yes. Ngayon, ang sinasabi nyo ngayon kasi na directly or indirectly dapat kami exempted sa corporate income tax kasi pag kami siningil nyo, sisingilin namin sa taong bayan. Karapatan namin yun. H hindi po namin sinasabing uh, na exempted kami sa income tax. Pero sinisingilin nyo sa taong bayan. Hindi Gusto nyo isama siya sa rate rebasing kasama ang corporate income tax. Ang, ang nais po sana namin, Mr. Chairman, is to be able to have a rate of return that is 
fair for the investments we're making. Ngayon po, kung ang mangyayari doon sa pagkatapos... Ano ng... ba yung fair? Di ba meron kayong uh, cap na 12%? Uh, oh, Mr. And Chair. Ang binibigay uh, lamang... Kung gusto mo uh, Mr. Aquino, factual lang naman po. Factual. Wala po tayong sinasabi kung ano yung mga motivation natin, ano yung intention natin. Part sa rate rebasing is yung pangbayad sa corporate income tax. Factual lang ho. Tama po, di ba? Part of the rate rebasing sa computation is the payment of corporate income tax. Yun lang naman po ang tanong ni... Walang, wala, wala hong intention ng motivation. Kasi ito, ito ho yan, no? Kung ang tingin nyo, indirectly, or directly or indirectly, wala kayo talagang dapat corporate income tax, kaya sinisigin nyo sa taong bayan, sinasabi nyo, exempted kayo sa corporate income tax, sa totoo lang. Uh, hindi po. Hindi po kami exempt from... Eh, ba't yung sinisingil sa taong bayan, yung corporate income tax? Ang hindi po namin sinisingil yon directly sa taong bayan. Ang ginagawa po namin ay humahanap po kami ng kung magkano yung return on the investments that we're going to be making. Yung pong kung tutubo kami doon o hindi, eh, nasa sa amin na... Hindi, ang lumalabas kasi, sir, uh, Mr. Aquino, ang corporate income tax ay kasama sa inyong expenses hindi nyo ito dapat bayaran, kaya sinisigil nyo ito sa, sa taripa na binabalik nyo sa taong bayan sa rate rebasing. Parang ganun ho lumalabas. Eh, alam po ninyo, sa katotohanan lamang po, noong for the past 15 years, noong concession, hindi po ganyan yung usapan eh. Ang lumalabas po yan, naging issue lamang po yan noong 2013. 2013. Na binrek up nila at sinama nila yung calculation na yan. Noong pong dati, ang nangyayari lamang po ay tinatanong kami effectively kung magkano yung fair return. And doon po, na-establish na noong 1997 ang, or 2002, ang fair return was 10%. Okay? And on that basis, kinumpute yung tarifa. Yeah, ano, ang issue ho natin kasi, inalayo nyo yung issue. Yung issue, yung trato sa corporate income tax. Sana ho magkaintindihan tayo. Kasi, ang trato nyo sa corporate income tax ay pabigat sa inyo at kung ito'y kayo sisingilin sa corporate income tax, magkabayad kayo, babawiin nyo yung corporate income tax na nakasama sa rate rebasing. Hindi po kasi dapat isasama ang corporate income tax doon sa rate rebasing discussion eh. Kasi po, ang dapat na pumapasok lamang sa rate rebasing is really... Mag eh, ba't kayo nasa Supreme Court? Ba't yung nilalabanan yun? Uh, hindi po kami ang may kaso sa Supreme Court. Ito po ay kaso ng Maynilad. Okay, uh, before we proceed. Oh, may nila. Oh, may nila. Sa mga chairman. Kaya klaro ko lang po, no, sa dalawang kumpanya na nandito, Manila Water and Maynilad, uh, huwag na po natin sabihin kung ano yung nandun sa embedded, sa expenses. Pero na ngayon po, nagdetaglihan, kasama yung currency exchange, kasama yung capital investments, OPEX, corporate income tax, nasama na po lahat. Part of the expenses. Tama po ba ganun nangyari? OGCC, Maybe best for you to answer that. Tama po, tama po. Hmm. Regulatory office, may I also get a reply? In the past um, administrations, the corporate income tax was included in the application of the concessionaires. So as part these of were expenses. passed on. Yes, as okay. an expenditure. So these were passed on to the consumers. But in 2013, this was disallowed by the regulatory office and this was adopted by the MWSS Board of Trustees. Okay, so okay, okay na kung rimulya. At least, klaro na yon from the part of RO. Sila kasi yung nakipag-away. You would like to yes. interject? Mister, uh, Mr. Aquino, ang lagi niyang sinasabi, yung fair return in so far as their investment is concerned. Mr. Aquino was present in yesterday's hearing. And one of my question is, ano ba ang fair return? And therefore, I ask that question to MWSS because they are the regulator in so far as the two water companies are concerned. An attorney who was present yesterday representing MWSS was absent and he stated that the pay rate of the return should be 7.5%. 7.39 of what? I even asked what would be the base. Ano sabi niya? Oh, you answer MWSS because you are the regulator and therefore you are the government agency 
who can protect the water concessioners and would have the right to determine what would be the fair return. Kasi kayo nakakaalam ng investment, kayo nakakaalam ng utang, kayong lahat nakakaalam ng return, kayo nag-approve ng rates, e eh di sabihin nyo, ano ba ang percentage ng fair return? At sinabi nyo na yan kapon. 7 point? 39. Of what? Of uh, the cash flows uh, pertaining to the operations. Okay, yung cash flows, income? Um, it includes income, operating expenses, capital expenses, and... Uh, Pag sinabi nyo yung cash flow represents the payment, it represents also the operating expenses, e di doble yun. Yung ibabayad ng mamamayan would be considered as cash flow on your part. Yung ibabayad nyo na naman sa bangko, kasama na naman sa cash flow. Ganun ba ang ibig nyo sabihin? Uh, wala pong interest na kasama po hindi sa nga, cash flow. Hindi nga sinasabi nyo cash flow. All yes. income. Mag madali lang yun. Yung binabayad ng water concessioner. Cash flow. Pagkatapos yung operating expenses, bayad nyo sa mga sweldo ng inyong mga tao, other operating expenses, kasama pa rin siya cash flow. Yes, sir. So, cash inflow and cash outflow. Yes, sir. That's the principle. Okay. And double accounting? No, no, sir. We are using um, a cash-based uh, system of uh, discounting uh, cash flows po. Yun yung, ang ginagamit po namin sa finance is, ang tawag po siya technically sa finance is discounted cash flow method. So, we are not using accounting strictly because accounting may tinatawag po silang accrual but uh, Mr. Chair we are using the discounted cash flow method okay. Pag sinabi mo ng mga accrual it presupposes na hindi nabayaran pero pag binayaran naman yon, papasok na rin yung cash flow I think you have to ex explain to us your determination of 7.34 yan bang peritan yan ba ang ginawa nyo for the last so many years, since 1997? Okay, Congressman uh, Remulia, maybe we can re uh, reply to that if we continue with uh, Congressman Barbers for your uh, interpolation. Uh, I will yield my time to Congressman okay, Barbers. Congressman Barbers has been asking intelligent questions. Pagkatapos ang isa ko pang very important question, who are the parties to the water concession agreement executed in 1997? Sino ba ang mga parties? Of course, MWSS. And Manila Water, was Manila a party to the water concession executed way back in 1997? No. No. Manila. MWSS. Oh, you're kayo nakipagkontrata eh. Sino ba ang kakontrata nyo noong 1997? Mr. Go Chair. ahead, the MWSS. Mr. Chair, the first owners of uh, Manila in 1997 is the Lopez's and the French company uh... was there a change in the in the corporation successor ba tong Manila ng Bempres or did Bempres transfer its rights to Manila? Uh, Mr. Chair, what we did in 2007 is that we rebidded the rights and obligation of Manila, and the one who won the rebidding is the new owners of Manila. Uh, you better inform us what would happen to the obligations, etc., etc., of the original concessionaire executed uh, in 1997. And another thing is that, can you inform us who are the signatories to this two water concession agreement? Because what we see only are their signatures. There are no printed names kung sino ba ang mga fumirma dito. Nung 207 po. Ah, 1997. 1997. Okay. Original. Original. Uh, Tingnan natin. Lito Lazaro on the part of MWSS. Wala, nakalagay. Walang nakalagay eh. Just signatures. Or na-erase na. Hindi, wala, wala. Hindi na-erase. Talagang wala. Oh. Oh, ito. Paano namin malalaman to? And this is a billion contract running for a period of 25 years, and even the printed names of the signatories are not present. Oh, can you identify this? MWSS. MWSS. 
Mr. Chairman, may, may we uh, request that we will submit the names of the signatories uh, and those who prepared, approved the 1997 Kasi ang sinasabi namin, payment. eh bakit ba hindi nang aprint? May tinatago ba tayo kung sino ang pumirma rito? Yun lang naman. Ordinary lawyers knows their, ob know their obligations. Eh dito, wala oh. The same, in the concession agreement. Nandun po ba kayo noong 1997 noong magkapirmahan? Uh, actually po, Mr. Chairman, uh, nasa engineering po ako. Bata po akong engineer noon. Bata pa rin po naman po. <laughs> Pero nandun na po kayo, 1997. Opo, this is my first job, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So, kung pwede ho magkaroon ng formal submission kung sino yung mga pumirma. At tinatanong po ni Congressman Barsaga, no, 2007, ano yung naging forma ng pagbid? Kasi it would seem bumili ng interes sa Maynila yung mga taong nag-bid, uh, not another company, with the agreement that they would, sila po ang sasalo ng lahat ng obligasyon at lahat ng utang. Congressman Bersaga. O, oh, baka grandfather rule. Tanong natin. Are the stockholders of Bempres the same or different from the stockholders of Maynila? If I may answer, sir, Mr. Chair. Yes. yes. Um, noong nangyari po noong 2007, eh, nabankrap po yung dating Maynilad. Uh, eh, ito po ang isang katunayan na mahirap. Maynilad ang nabankrap noong 2007. Yung, yung luma pong Maynilad, yung dati pong Maynilad. Okay, eh, go ahead. natin eh, kasi pag dating Maynilad, when was Maynilad organized? Noong 1997 pa po. Meron ng Maynilad? Opo. But in spite of the fact that Maynila was already existing in 1997, hindi sila ang naging water concessionaire. Sila po ang naging concessionaire noong 1997 via the Lopez's po. Hindi nga. Ikaw ba? Ang sinasabi ko, hindi Maynila. Ang water concessionaire in 1997, MWS, regulator, sino ang kakontrata nyo noong 1997? May nilad ba? First of all, uh, Mr. Chair, the regulatory office was not a party to the concession agreement. We nabuo lang po sila. After, After the concession, the concession agreement. agreement po nabuo. So, uh, Ay, teka. Oh. The concession agreement is between Metropolitan Water Works and Severage System and Manila Water Company. Whom do you represent? MWSS? I am from MWSS oh. Regulatory Office. Mr. Oh, Chair. is the regulatory office separate. have a separate juridical personality from MWSS? Nabuo po ang uh, regulatory office. Matapos po yung agreement na yan. Okay, so yeah. MWSS should answer this. Corporate office, please reply. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ang nagbid po during 1997 uh, privatization of the management and distribution of MWSS is Ben Prespo. Kaya nga. Kasama po ang French company na Leones Desi. Kaya nga, yun lang ang tanong namin. At yun po ay, Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, binigyan po nila ang pangalan nila na joint venture na Maynilad. Kaya po na ipanganak ang pangalang Maynilad noong 1997. Na binili naman po ng grupong ng bagong Maynilad in 2007. So, Ito nga, noong 1997, hindi party ang Maynilad. It's Ben Press po, I stand corrected. Ben Press. Opo, opo. Then what happens to that concession agreement for 25 years ng Ben Press? Uh, if I may interject, yes, Mr. Ben Chairperson, Ben Press, ang nangyari po noong 2007 nga po, na bankrupt po yung, yung Ben Press Consortium uh, at uh, binalik po nila yung kanilang concession sa MWSS. So, ang ginawa po ng MWSS is nagparibid. Nag-competitive bidding po sila at dun po uh, nanalo po ngayon yung MPIC at saka DMCI Consortium. At binayaran po na, in minana po namin ang 90% of all of the MWSS loans at binayaran po namin ang $240 million yung utang na kinarga po sa amin noong lumang Maynilad. Ang utang na ang sovereign guarantee will be the Republic of the Philippines. 
at that time po, wala po. Wala po kami inutang uh, na okay. ang uh, COVID. We'll review that agreement oh. yes, for sir. the benefit of everybody, including the members of Congress. Okay, and uh, if MWS Corporate Office can please supply yung po mga binanggit ni Congressman Barsaga para malinaw na malinaw po lahat ng mga ano. Next to uh, interpolate is uh, Congressman Barbers. Okay na po? Um, Mr. Chairman, I uh, stated earlier that I was yielding yes. my time to Congressman Barsaga. Uh, ang tagal ni Congressman Barsaga, kaya... Doon na lang ho ako sa second round. Second Mr. round, yan. Yeah. Thank you. Congressman Gaite. Uh, maraming salamat po. Uh, una sa lahat, nagpapasalamat ako sa ating uh, komite para talakayin itong overly delayed na, na pag-imbestiga dito sa... 22 years, imagine, no? 1997. Ngayon lang natin talagang seryosong uh, inaaral ano ba yung mga provisions ng agreement uh, in 1997, 22 years after the fact. Ngayon lang natin nakikita, bagamat marami nang nagreklamo mga mamamayan, kasama kami, actually niyo po, eh ako, kung naalala ko ni Ma'am Cleofas, uh, kami yung nagpipikit sa harap ng uh, MWSS noon. Kasi kasama ko po yung Courage at yung mga employees ng MWAS. We were already protesting the planned uh, privatization of MWAS way, way back. No? Namatay na nga po yung leader namin doon, si Beth uh, Nuyad. Yan, naalala nyo pa po. Kaya medyo na, ano, na, na, ano ko eh, na... na <laughs> Oo, medyo... Pero natutuwa ako tinatalakay. Uh, maganda po yung binanggat ni Justice, ni Congressman uh, Beloso, no? na parang apparently, although if ito nakita na namin problem before, mukhang mismo yung kontrata, merong talagang ano, infirmities. Kasi tama po yung pinapoint na yung Pangulo ng Pilipinas at that time was given the authority to, re to negotiate for the contract. And yet, MWSS ang nag-take up nung uh, supposed uh, authority. And as explained by Congressman Beloso, um, uh, hindi pwede i-delegate yung authority na yan. Uh, dahil nandito po kayo nung panahon na yon, would you have any idea how was the process of authorizing MWSS to negotiate for the contract? Uh, was there any uh, authorization? Uh, and secondly, may validity ba if there was any authority given by the President at the time for MWSS to negotiate? for the said contract of the concession agreement, uh, Mr. Chair. MWSS. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot uh, answer the question raised by Congressman uh, Gaite because uh, I'm not involved in the process during the time of uh, bidding. Uh, and also, I'm a technical, a te technical person, not uh, involved in any bidding as far as uh, the privatization in 1997 is concerned. Mahari po siguro yung OGCC. Meron pong kinalaman dito. Sa... De, para lang pagkaklaro, uh, whoever was here or who can reply, ang nangyari po dito in 1997, nagkaroon na tatlong batas. Proclamation 50, the Committee on Pub uh, Privatization, uh, BOT Law, yung uh, 6754, at saka po yung 8041, yung uh, Water Crisis Act. Ang pinagbatayan po nila dyan, yung Water Crisis Act, isang sentence lang ang nakalagay dyan that the President may... In fact, it was not a direct negotiation. Pwede siyang magkaroon ng negosyasyon para sa BOT. So, build, operate, and transfer pa rin. Nung nangyari po ito, uh, nagkaroon ng uh, mga... Kasi ang nagsagawa ay DPWH. Kinuwan nila yung IFC as the general advisor. Kaya nga po binanggit ko, ang isa sa mga legal na abogado para tumulak po dito ay ang ACRA Law Office. At sila ang nagtulak sa Office of the President para maglabas ng dalawang executive order. Executive order uh, 296 ba? 274? At inulit to ng 311. 311. Pero dalawa po yan executive order. Yun lang po ang naging batayan. Tapos nagkapirmahan na para sa isang kontrata. Uh, I do not know if any of the resource persons here would be able to validate. Wala po ba? Anyway, at any rate, we will be asking the DOJ. Of, oh, DOJ. Meron po kayong pag-aaral ngayon dito sa onerous provisions of the contract at saka po yung naging basis ng 
pagkikipagpirmahan, would we know your position on this? Yung tanong po ng Congre ni Congressman Gaite. Um, yes, Mr. Chair, Your Honors. Um, the Department of Justice conducted a review of the concession agreement pursuant to the directive of the President uh, during a cabinet meeting held in February 1 of 2019. Uh, and that directive stemmed from the uh, water service interruptions uh, in Metro Manila and other parts of the provinces at that time. And that was in March and in April of this year. So pursuant to that um, instruction of the president, the department uh, organized a panel that reviewed the concession agreements. And in that um, review, the laws and executive issuances relevant to the privatization of MWSS. Um, Lumabas po yung Republic Act 6234, Republic Act 8041, EO 286. Ano po yung 6234? Um, that is the charter of oh, the charter, MWSS. okay. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, the EO 286, series of 1995, and EO... 311, series of 1996. So those were the basis for the uh, privatization of MWSS. At batay po dun sa inyong pag-aaral, may legal na batayan ang privatization? Um, batay po sa aming pag-aaral, hindi naman po lumabas na invalid yung privatization. Kahit walang prangkisa na sinagawa para dito? Um, Kasi po ang, the franchise belongs to NWSS. Okay. Hindi po ba? By, by virtue of um, RA 6234. Of so the yun charter. Po, and then, yes. Yun, yun, yun po yung charter ng NWSS. And um, lumabas lang po na nagkaroon ng privatization ng NWSS pursuant to EOs. The so EOs. yung proseso under the built, operate, at transfer at yung ginawa legal. Wala po kaming findings na hindi po ito legal, pero kasi po, uh, nag-concentrate po ang aming review doon po sa onerous provisions, uh, provisions that are uh, contrary to law and disadvantageous provisions. That so wala pa kayong pag-aaral talaga kung legal o illegal? Wala pong ganong naging katanungan para sa aming okay. panel to review on that. Congressman Gaite. Uh, salam, sir. Kaya po tinatanong ngayon. Uh, yung po yung purpose. Kasi po, the questions raised by Congressman Bilboso, uh, put say monkey wrench, no? Mukhang, uh, kung babalikan natin, yung batayan sa pagpasok sa ag agreement na to, I think Congressman Bilboso essentially saying, yung validity of the negotiating authority of the MWSS to enter into an agreement, considering na, nabanggit niya, public utilities, ang pwede lang magbigay ng prangkisa ay ang Kongreso. Uh, dagdag pang katanungan, and you said, I think this, I, I think it's very, it's very valid, especially now, kung bakit nagsimula itong mga problema ito. Hindi pa pumuputok tong problema ng uh, arbitral tribunal awarding uh, 10 billion. Yung problema natin, yung uh, kakulangan ng tubig. Kasi kahit dito sa service uh, obligations ng uh, Maynila and Manila Water, uh, even today, I think a uh, month uh, previously, nag-start na naman yung problema ng kakulangan ng tubig. At ito ang pinakamasakit na ulo ng mga mamamayan ng Metro Manila. Kung masakit na yon nung uh, February or March of uh, this year, again, balik na naman. At ang isang threatening, uh, threatening uh, announcements by the MWSS, by Manila and Manila Water, if there is not enough rain, in Angat uh, Dam, we might have to start, hindi pa nga, tag-ulan pa ngayon eh, pero papasok na yung tag-tuyot uh, come uh, early part, uh, first quarter of this year, uh, next year. Ano ba yung prospects uh, ng uh, nakikita natin ngayon from MWSS uh, 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 findings, the Maynila did mineral water, Dito sa mangyayari muli na are we going to experience uh, rationing water shortages? And I think if it does happen, it would be more dire. Dakit, bakit? Eh, gayon pa lamang eh. Nagwa-warning na kayo na 
kukulangin yung tubig at nagre-rationing na. Uh, banggitin ko lang po, tagapasig po ako. At we have been experiencing rationing for the past, I think, one month already or less. Pero ganun nga, 12 hours a day lang ang tubig namin. I don't know in the ibang areas. Uh, we're serviced by Manila Water. So, ano ho ba? Uh, ito yung katanungan. No? Marami nating mga mamamayan. Ano na ba ang mangyayari? Considering meron kayong service obligations to provide 24 by 7 uh, uh, hours uh, uh, water services. Pero nangyayari pala, hindi 24 by 7. 24 divided by 7. Kaya parang 8 hours a day lamang ang tubig. Parang mali ata yun. Hindi ganun ata ang appreciation namin. Uh, so, uh, ano ho ba ang prospects for the current uh, situation in our uh, water crisis way back in 1997 it's, and it's still a water crisis in, to, in 2019? Uh, Mr. May we ask uh, Maynila and Manila Water to respond? Uh, sa poder po ng Maynila, um, ang water concession po na, ng Maynila at Manila Water ay dependent po sa tubig na binibigay po sa amin ng NWRB at MWSS. Uh, simula po noong itong taon na to, uh, nagsimula na pong bumaba yung binibigay nila. Ang, nakalagay, ang nakasaad po sa agreement po namin ay 46 CMS. Ngayon lang po tumatanggap po lang po kami ng 40 CMS. Kaya po kami ay very much dependent on that water source. But having said that, kami po sa Maynilad ay Please. Tama, tama po yan, Mr. Chairman. And uh, gaya din po nang sa Maynilad, uh, doon po sa aming uh, initial allocation, dapat po 46 cubic meters per second ang binibigay sa amin galing sa anggat. Subalit, nakikita ng National Water Resource Board na bumababa yung level sa anggat. Kanya po, ang ginawa nila ngayon, maaga pa lang, nagbawas na sila ng pagbibigay ng tubig sa amin nasa sa 40 cubic meters per second na lamang tayo. Kanya po, kinailangang magkaroon tayo ng konting pagbabawas. Ngayon po, ang sa aming pananaw, nararapat po na as a minimum, maipagpatuloy ng National Water Resource Board yung pagbalanse ng paggamit sa tubig na nanggagaling sa anggat. Kasi po, ang tubig sa anggat, nanggagaling po yan, na ginagamit po yan, kuminsan sa hydroelectric, Kuminsan po, binibigay din yan doon sa irrigation. Kuminsan din po, binibigay din doon sa mga kababayan natin sa Bulacan at sa San Jose del Monte. So, yung po ay dapat mabalanse ng National Water Resource Board. Sila po ang uh, government entity na nag allocate At ang ninanais po sana namin, kasi po, sa tingin ko, medyo imposible po na mabalik tayo sa 46 CMS. Eh. As a minimum, dapat po sana ma-retain itong 40 CMS all the way hanggang summer. Oh, 40 CMS, I'm sorry. All the way until summer. Para po yung level of service natin, as alam po natin na kulang pa compared with kung nasa 46 tayo, ay mapagpatuloy. And uh, kailangan po siguro ng uh, mandate na sa NWRB ipagpatuloy as a minimum itong 40 CMS uh, release amin. Salamat po. Rungis Magayte. So, Tama, dire ang prospects that we, as early as now, natagulan pa, and we're expecting uh, the dry season to come in. So, ang tanong ko lang, are, are we going to experience the same uh, rationing of water now until, baka na forever na ito? Kasi pagkatapos na tag, uh, tag init, di tagulan na naman, di next year. And during the hearings previously, there were, there were uh, uh, admi admissions of the Maynila and Mineral Water regarding their failure to provide or project the, the uh, certain projects were, which were not put online because of certain problems in the uh, operationalization of such ser services. Meron ako naalala na may pangako na Dapat September, if I'm not mistaken, ma online ni ibang uh, uh, na, na, na tigil na mga projects. Uh, I think the pipe, uh, meron kayong din develop na alternative uh, 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 viaduct from, uh, I think, from Angat. Then the other, nabanggit yo po, may iba pa kayong water source 
uh, development projects na nabanggit kanina na online. Even with that new services, whenever that will be online, uh, napoproject nyo ba? Kasi I believe hindi lang mga anggat ang ating water source. Pero major ito. So, dire pa, ibig sabihin hindi maibabalik doon sa same 24 by 7 uh, water service availability, uh, Mr. Uh, Chair. Thank you, Congressman Gaite. Manila Water, can you kindly reply? Mababalik lamang po tayo pagka nakaabot po tayo doon sa 46 CMS release sa atin. Kanya po, ang buhay namin depende po doon sa pagre-release ng National Water Resource Board. Napakahalaga po noon. Kasi po, kung wala pong i-release amin, kukulangin din po yung aming ma distribute Kanya po, napakahalaga ng bagay na yon. At saka, mahalaga din po yung ibang napag-usapan kanina, yung long-term water supply sources. Yung gagawin po sa Liban Dam, napakahalaga po nun. Although alam po natin na aabutin pa tayo ng mga tatlong taon bago makaabot doon sa pag-operationalize. O tatlo, o limang taon siguro para ma-operationalize yung uh, new water source, yung kaliwa, yung kaliwa, Adam. So, kanya po, talagang uh, kulang po tayo. And ito po sana ang isang napakahalagang bagay na dito sa committee ito kasi po ito yung root cause of the problem eh. Mm -hmm. Kung wala tayong water source, magkakaroon tayo ng problema. And unfortunately, it's our customers who will suffer. Pero wala po kami magawa dahil sa depende lamang po kami kung magkano yung inirelease sa amin ng uh, NWRB. Mali po siguro sa next hearing, patawag din natin yung NWRB para malinaw. Maynilad, may we get a response from you? Uh, the same, sir. Uh, we can only distribute what we have. Thank you. So, uh, Congressman Gaite, doon sa katanungan mo, medyo masama talaga ang sitwasyon natin pagdating sa tubig. And NWRB will be critical. I'd like to recognize uh, Congressman Onyx Kisrologo of Quezon City. Our next uh, interpolator, ba bago po tayo po tumuloy kay Congresswoman Castro. Okay, so si Congressman Brosses will be taking over. But bago lang po magpatuloy sa DOJ, nasa na po ba ang DOJ? Lumabas po ba? Kanina ho na... Attorney Cuevas. Attorney Cuevas. Kasi nagtataka ako, sabi nyo, hindi illegal yung ano, and above board. Pagkatapos, kayo din ang nag-advise sa MWSS na yung resolution i to cancel the contract nangyari ngayon lang. Tama ba? Ngayon nyo lang natanggap, di ba ho? And it was a product to, MW, to MWSS and the regulatory office, ngayon nyo lang tinanggap based on the cabinet directive na i-cancel yung resolution. Yes, MWS, uh, uh, OGCC. Mr. Chair, uh, the cancellation is on the extension. Yes, not, exactly. The extension. Not, not, not this concession agreement. That, yes. That, that was the directive, Mr. Chair. Pero ang findings ni DOJ, walang problema sa kontrata, sa concession agreement. Wala, di ba? Sabi niya, Hindi, sabi niya wala daw but they are working on the onerous provisions. Oh. So kung pinag-aaralan pa nila yung onerous provisions, bakit nyo nakinancel yung contract? Ano yung extension ng contract? The, the extension of the contract. Yes. Ayan, ayan. DOJ, uh, I was asking earlier, uh, Attorney Cuevas, Magkakasama kayo ni OGCC at MWSS, correct? In the cabinet discussion regarding uh, studying in March. You said March, you already studied the contract and made the review. Is that correct? Uh, no, sir. The, the directive of the president uh, was made during the cabinet meeting held in April of 2019. 2019. Yes, sir. So, 2019, ni-review nyo na? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. So, may nakita na kayong onerous provisions? Yes, Mr. Chair. As early as April 2019? Um, we submitted the final review, uh, Mr. Chair, in May of 2019. May? 2019. 
Nung May 2019, meron na kayong submission. Can you provide us with that and the recent studies that you have? Um, uh, yes, sir. We can, we can give you a copy of the memorandum we sent to the Office of the President. Okay, thank you. So, hey, kaklaro ha. Ang sabi nyo, wala kayong nakitang illegal, pero may mga nakita kayong onerous provisions. Tama? Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may clarify. Yes, please. Uh, we reviewed the terms and the provisions of the concession agreement. Yes. And there, uh, we, um, we found several, a number of onerous provisions, and we also uh, identified a provision that is illegal or is contrary to law. May we know what that provision is? Um, uh, it's a provision that refers to uh, provision on non-interference by the government in the setting of rates and connection charges for water and sewerage services. So non-interference of government in the provision of, in the determination. In the setting of rates and connection charges for water and sewerage services. How, how, how can it be that interference when the regulatory office is involved? Uh, no, sir. There is a provision in the concession agreement yes. and in the letters of undertaking yes. that says um, the provision provides for a non-interference by the government. In and the implementation. In the setting of rates. In the setting of rates. And connection charges. Ano po to, eh? Letter of... And, uh, of understanding, this is not part of the concession agreement. Tama po ba? Letters of undertaking. Out of undertaking, sorry. This was issued 1997? Yes, Mr. Chair. Dated July 31 of 1997. May letter of undertaking po noong 1997. Wala po dyan. Iba po yun. It's, and, uh, uh, it's an annex. It, it's annex, uh, annex to the concession agreement. Mr. Okay, so, alright. So that's clear. Mr. Ngayon, Chair, uh, uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, kadugtong lang ng tanong mo. Uh, Dishonorous provisions, am I correct? Uh, kasama na yan dun sa 1997 concession agreement, uh, Attorney Cuevas? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, not in the agreement, in the annex, letter of, un of uh, undertaking. But there was already a letter of undertaking sa ano, 1997? Attached to the original concession agreement? Uh, okay. Yes, Thank Mr. You. Chair. Thank you, Mr. So, thank you. So, ngayon, nung nag-usap po kayo nung May, kailan po lumabas yung cabinet directive na i-cancel yung kontrata? Kasi ngay ngayong umaga lang natanggap, kung gusto mo ang brosas, this morning lang nila natanggap na may official letter na of cancellation in this meeting. Dito nila nakuha. So, kailan lumabas naman to? Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead. Yung bang, uh, just another question doon, dagdag sa ano? Eh, pabilis na lang, may sagot na ba doon sa tanong ko? Kailan yung directive sa inyo? Uh, November 8, Mr. Chair. November 8. So, iba na tong May at November 8. Okay, go ahead. I was made to understand that the annex, which uh, indicates all these onerous provisions that we have identified, which is attached to the, con the original concession agreement, was never signed. Tama ba yun? The concession well, well, agreement was never signed? No, no, no the annex, the, the which uh, stipulates these onerous provisions, which they identified, were never signed. Yung, especially yung, ano, yung uh, provision of uh, <coughs> yung no government interference or intervention. Dun sa 1997 yun. Uh, okay, dumi-copy ka ng letter of undertaking. 
Wala Hindi, baka MWSS eh, siguro or DOJ can provide us with that. Uh, that's all. Mr. Chair, yun lang para makita rin natin. Ang sinasabi ni Congressman Barbers that the letter of undertaking was never signed. Yes, yung, yung annex dun sa 1997 concession agreement. Kasi ako, nandun, wala akong letter. Nandun dun yung mga sinasabi ng DOJ na onerous eh. Si ibig sabihin, 1997 pa pala, meron ng provision dun na sinasabi na hindi pwede mag-intervene o mag-interfere ang government dun sa rate rebasing, tama? So hindi pala bago yun. Kasi we never saw that eh. Yes. Akala na ako personally, I thought, Mr. Chair, that that provision was only in the undertaking of 2007, uh, which was signed in 2010. So 1997 pa siya. Yun. Ay, ito po yun. Nakalagay po dito. Exhibit D. Letter D. Tama, hindi yung signed. Pero ang nakalagay dito, the Republic shall not interfere with the mechanisms contained in Article 9 of the agreement relating to the setting of rates and connection charges for water and sewerage services. Tama ka, Congressman Barbers, hindi po signed. But it should have been signed by uh, Secretary De Ocampo, Secretary of Finance. And it was never, it was never... So it's never signed. Oh. DOJ, was it signed? Yes, MWSS. Mr. Chairman, it was signed and we will just give the committee a copy of the thank signed you. performance undertaking. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh, yes, Congressman Bersaga. What is the position of the MWSS? Will this be binding? Considering that the document was signed by the Secretary of Finance on behalf of the Republic of the Philippines? Uh, Mr. Chair, I understand that this is the undertaking of the Government Republic of the Philippines no, no. Uh, uh, represented by Department of Finance. Well, does the Secretary of Finance have this authority? It's not even by the President. Under the authority of the President, Republic of the Philippines by Roberto D. Ocampo, Secretary of Finance. If cabinet secretaries could execute these documents validly, that would be too dangerous to our country. Actually, uh, just for the information, uh, yes, this was signed on behalf of the Republic. There are uh, undertakings, uh, international agreements that can be signed by Secretary of Finance in terms of loans and uh, yes. financial applications. But that should be by authority of the President because cabinet secretaries are considered alter ego of the President. Opo, by authority po to. Okay. Opo, Just by authority of the President. Opo, so sige. So, so inulit ko lang ho ah. Nung May, nag-submit ng DOJ, may onerous provisions. Ang directive to cancel was November. And uh, ito po yung resulta. And we are awaiting now the reply of Manila Water and Manila as to the cancellation of the renewal of extension. So we now proceed with the Congresswoman Rosas for her interpolation. And may I recognize uh, Deputy Speaker, the debonair, Dante Marcoleta. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, napansin ko lang dun sa pinag-uusapan natin concession uh, concession agreement um, merong kulang eh dun sa public participation and engagement parang ang nangyari yung concession agreement it's between um, MWSI Manila at uh, Manila Manila Water at uh, MWSS lamang. Pero yung public participation and engagement, hindi natin nakita. Samantalang for public public interest ito and public service nga ang pinag-uusapan natin. Actually, kung tatanungin natin yung mga tao kung dapat bang magkolekta ng increases sa connection charges, sa rate rebasing, sa FCDA, sa CPI o Consumer Price Index, baka marinig natin sila na hindi talaga sila papayag dito. No? So, apparently, anuman yung consultation na nangyari, actually, 
Historical po ito sa Gabriela Women's Party kasi nakadalawang negosasyon kami ng nakaraan sa MWSS. Nakailang, dalawang, dalawang rally po, nakadalawang rally din po kami sa labas ng MWSS ng Maynila at saka ng Manila Water. So, and we've been filing, no, for the last kahit po itong ano no yung house resolution number 19 namin na ipinasa nitong July 1 dahil ito yung unang-unang um, ipinasa namin dahil gusto na namin talagang magkaroon ng malalim na discussion dun sa mga tinatawag ang onerous provisions kaugnay dito sa uh, water concession agreements so Uh, Mr. Chair, gusto ko lang itanong sa MWSS, paano yung public engagement nila kaugnay dito sa um, sa mga agreements na ito? Go ahead, MWSS. Mr. Chair, just clarification. Ma'am, ang sinasabi niyo po bang, ang tinutukoy niyo po ba yung 1997 na BD? Speaker Alan Peter Caetano. in his capacity as chairperson of the Philippine Southeast Asian Games Organizing Committee and the Honorable Representative Abraham Bambol Tolentino in his capacity as chairperson of the Philippine Olympic Committee and all other organizers of the 30th Southeast Asian Games for the tremendous success of the 30th SEA Games by Representative Tam Bunting. Committee on Rules. House Resolution. At least for public consultations. And... Actually, a majority of the attendees in those public consultations expressed that they were okay with a minimal increase, uh, provided that they will continue to receive um, quality service from the concessionaires. Of course, there are certain groups, certain people that um, still express their um, disagreement with, uh, with any increase. Okay. Mr. Chair, baka meron silang kopya nung kanilang mga uh, naging engagements for the past. Ano, siguro humingi po tayo ng kopya para makita natin kung sino-sino yung mga inimbita. Baka pwede po yung uh, minutes mapadala po dito. Actually, sa... we have um, reports for those public consultations Salamat and we can po. provide that to this Honorable Committee. Thank and you. how do you do that uh, sa MWSS? Nagpa-public um, announcement po ba kayo? And usually, sino-sino yung mga representations na pinapapunta nyo dito? Okay, so um, for the last public consultations, for the last rate rebasing, we did two for the Manila Water um, customers and two for the uh, Maynila customers. So we invited um, the municipalities um, in those concerned areas. We also invited um, certain NGOs Um, that we know are consumer groups that are interested in the rate rebasing. So sometimes we also publish this in the newspaper and we also posted this in our website. Okay, where are the venues pala no mga public, uh, public engagement in you? For the uh, Maynila water side, we had two. One was in Cavite and the other was in... Quezon City. Quezon City. And for Manila Water, we had one in Rizal and another in Quezon City in Bahay ng Alumni, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, to my next question. Um, yung hindi pa po sa onerous provisions ito eh. Mas ito po ay yung sinasabi kanina ni Justice uh, Veloso na legality. nung uh, concession agreement dahil uh, sinasabi nga po natin na <clears throat> yung concession agreement parang dapat kung public utility siya for public service siya di therefore um, merong franchise no na pinag-uusapan at uh, para mag-operate siya na nagpo-provide ng water services to the public, dapat may legislative franchise tayong requirements under, na, under the 1987 Constitution. Ngayon po, um, parang sinasabi nyo na sa agreement, dahil agents lang, tama po ba yung pagkarinig ko kanina, agents lang, so therefore, um, walang need for franchise. Hanggang ngayon po ito ang stand ng... ng Maynilad at ng Manila Water? Okay. 
Mr. Chair, kaya ko po tinatanong to kasi parang dapat i-resolve muna natin kung dapat um, sa, sa usapin na ito ay uh, tama ba na parang walang uh, anong tawag dito? Walang obligasyon yung Maynilad at saka yung Manila Water sa mga naganap dahil um, wala silang legislative franchise uh, paano ko ba i-ano to Mr. Chair gusto ko lang malaman na ano yung yung naniniwala sila na uh, hindi dapat wala wala silang legislative franchise walang need para sila ay mag-acquire ng legislative franchise pero sinasabi natin na kapag public service o public utility ang pinag-uusapan yon ay necessary sa 1987 constitution yes DOJ kindly reply uh, doon sa franchise Ang tanong po ay kung uh, dapat sana magkaroon ng prangkisa batay doon sa konstitusyon dahil sa ito ay isang public utility at dapat bigyan ng prangkisa mula sa kongreso. Kasi po first, yung basic, uh, providing a basic commodity indispensable to the interest of the general public, yun po, tubig po yun eh. Tapos providing such commodity directly to the general public, yung pinag-uusapin natin ay tubig. So, kung wala silang legislative franchise, parang hindi sila at MWS lang ang meron. Parang they get away or they skirt doon sa, sa usapin. Para lang, na, para lang makadagdag ako doon sa tanong kanina. No? Nung tinanong natin yung OGCC, ano ba tong Manila Water at Manila? Public utility ba sila? Sabi ni OGCC, yes, public utility. <laughs> ang sagot ng Manila Water at Manila, no, we are agents. of uh, a public utility which is uh, MWSS. Ang sabi naman ng DOJ kanina, and maybe we can validate this again, ang sagot ninyo, the franchise is actually MWSS and they contracted Maynilad and Manila Water. Kindly reply, DOJ. <coughs> Sir, as to whether uh, the two concessionaires are considered as public utilities, and or agent, uh, it is our position that both concessionaires are public utilities performing public service. Yes, actually, we agree with, uh, I, I agree with, uh, no, with the position of the DOJ. Public utility, public service siya. So, ibig sabihin, kung wala siyang legislative franchise, therefore, in violation of the 1987 Constitution siya. Uh, Mr. Chair, yun, yun yung gusto nating uh, sabihin dito. Hindi pwedeng yung um, representations or taking refuge dun sa, sa usapin na agent lang, etc. E samantalang pinag-uusapan natin ay too big. At sa, so, sabi nga natin, for public interest ito and for public service. So the DOJ's position, ang position DOJ is public utility si Manila Water and Maynilad? Yes, sir. It is part of our review that from the provision of the law and jurisprudence, it is evident that the concessionaires okay. can so be considered as So, ang assertion ni Congresswoman Brosas, given that they're public utility, the grant should have been a franchise. Is that the position of DOJ? Mr. Chair, honestly, we did not um, take up the legality of the uh, of the um, delegation or, or the privatization of The MWSS. Anyway, Congresswoman Brosas, medyo ganyan din yung posisyon ng mga yes. kasama natin. So, uh, yes, anyway, Mr. Please Chair. Continue. I, I would like to go to, ma, to some of the honors provisions siguro na tinatanong natin. For example, yung sa um, usapin po ng yung sa provision na kalagay ang The, uh, the concession agreements granted uh, Manila Water and uh, Maynila Water powers relating to easements, eminent domain, right-of-way, among others. Hindi po ba napaka-powerful nito? Parang um, kasing kapareho na siya ng iba pang private entities at um, yung... 
mga well eto po yung ano eh eto po yung process, uh, which particular provision it's in the 7.2 ng concession article 7.2 of the concession agreements Eminent it's domain. about the easement, easement eminent domain right of way and similar powers ang question po doon transferred yung powers na yon to Manila Water and Maynilad yes oh. DOJ can you please reply Yes, sir. On the provision of uh, art, uh, Section 7.2 on Eastman's eminent domain right of way and similar powers, it is the finding of the, of the panel that th this provision gives the concessionaire the full discretion and control to exercise the power of eminent domain, a power given by law to the MWSS as a government entity and thus cannot be delegated by the MWSS to the concessionaires under the principle of non-delegation of delegated power. So, okay, non-delegated. Delegated. Sabi nila, ayaw nila yun. It should not be undue delegation. Yes, pero sa, sa, sa ano nga po, sa provision, yan yung kuna question natin. Apa. Honorous provision. So Kaya the... sinasabi natin na um, yung mga private entities, if they are not granted the power of eminent domain of absent a law, particularly a legislative franchise, hindi po yun pwede sa ating Opo. Pareho po tayo na posisyon ng DOJ po. Oo. Second po, sa general rate setting o policy rate three basic determination, yung kanina pinag-uusapan natin yun eh, yung sa taxes, no? Nakita po natin dito sa particular sa 9.4, um, Article 9.4 ng concession agreement, um, lumalabas vague at saka masyadong ma malabo yung nakalagay na Philippine Business Taxes and Payments. Kaya therefore, po pwedeng, pwedeng nagamit doon yung usapin na kahit yung corporate income tax ay pwede nilang I, oh, ipasa, di ba? Uh, MWSS, uh, ipasa sa uh, consumers, sa pagbayad ng mga consumers. Maybe the regulatory office can reply? Actually, uh, we agree with the observation of uh, the Honorable Congresswoman. Uh, and I, this was also the bone of contention in the arbitration cases, the definition of Philippine business taxes. So it was the position of the, it is the position of the concessionaires that Philippine business taxes include corporate income tax. And we disagreed with that. So it's, um, maybe it was suggested to revise or to categorically provide in the concession agreement that corporate income tax will not be treated as an expenditure. But the MWSS concession agreed.